to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Let's lift our hands to Jesus. Father, thank you. Thank you. Go ahead and just tell him thank you for the miracles, for your grace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just communicate your gratitude. Thank you, Jesus. is a product of your grace it's a product of your mess thank you thank you thank you thank you express your gratitude to him Hallelujah. praise the lord lift your hands in one minute and truly thank him we are taking our time to thank him Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are testimonies that you are a good God. Our lives are the proof that you are dependable. We thank you. Japrakatu segete palakusi enabakasi. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. Good evening. Hallelujah. While, while I sat back there, you know, I was just, let me tell you what was in my mind. I was just looking at us in, in my mind, truly and in my spirit. And wondering what your life will become like when God is done with you. you know, not just because of the testimonies. The testimonies are a token. They are a representation is proof to you that God is with you. But let me tell you, his commitment is more than these testimonies. The implication of his presence in your life is far bigger than this. This cannot be all why he's with you. And my joy is the knowledge. You see, vision, vision is the ability to see things the way it should be, not the way it is. Vision is the ability to see things that you can look at a weak brother a weak sister a weak gentleman a weak lady and you know the implication of what their lives will become on account of what they are receiving please listen it's not a mystery what we are becoming by the power of the word of god and by the ministry of his spirit is not a mystery it's not something we are trying to guess the picture is very clear god has a portrait god has an idea of what a believer should look like after a sufficient season of yieldedness your life should represent something and the bible gives us an idea of it psalm 112 he said blessed is the man that feareth the lord 
that delighted greatly in his commands no matter how small that man is blessed is the man that can take the risk of reverence for God and delights in his command he says his seed shall be mighty upon earth and then he says the generation of the righteous shall be blessed he says wealth and riches shall be in his house and that his righteousness endures forever and you begin to read and see that he, the desire his desire upon his enemies will come to pass the enemies will look at him and only gnash their teeth listen what god is making us become let's trust him you may not trust a preacher you may not trust yourself but trust god trust god because let me tell you you see when he's done with us it will be to him all the glory you will watch your life and say my god so this is what god can do you get the glory you get you take the honor. I just want to say, thank you. you get the glory. You get the glory. You get the praise. You get the praise. You take the honor. You take the honor. I just want to say, thank you. Thank you. So we my. Be glorified, be glorified for your grace and your hand. say Lord my life will bring you glory forget about the mockers forget about what does not look like it yet in your life Lord find glory through my life my life will give you glory to bring you glory my life will bring you glory My life will bring you glory. I praise you. I praise you. Oh. I praise you. I praise you. Oh. Lord. In my life. I see what you're doing one more time. I lift my hands in praise. 
that forever you will be glorified in our lives forever you will be glorified in this house this remains a place where you will be glorified that men will continue to see your awe and your majesty in and through our lives thank you for making us signs and wonders epistles of your grace epistles of your majesty we thank you in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. Hallelujah. For as long as you continue to embrace the person of the Holy Spirit, for as long as you continue to be childlike enough and allow his word to change you, I give you a guarantee. It's a guarantee. Your life will surprise you. It's true. It's true. It's true. The system for the lifting of men in the kingdom will never change. It will never be uniquely constructed just because of you. What you think about it or don't think about it makes no difference. The way, you see, God does not align to our terms. No. We are the ones who will humble ourselves and align to his ways. Are we together? If at all God is merciful, he stretches his hands to bring you not that he stretches to leave his position so the idea is not to invent your way you don't seek god at his terms it's pride and let me tell you something please listen to me many preachers are getting it wrong the way they are building people will frustrate them somewhere along the line it is true now i i must confess to you it is difficult to build people holistically it is very difficult because our individual callings you see the way god works with men is that because of his call upon your life he tilts you towards a dimension of himself and you will have to focus in that area to gain mastery the side effect of that focus is that you will trivialize other areas are we together now if god has called me into the ministry of healing for instance chances are that because of my focus my staying in that area all the books i read all the conferences i go to will be along the healing ministry chances are that i will pay little attention to leadership and administration because it has not been captured in my experience with god that is the reason why the unity of the body is important because seeking God in that way has a side effect but he created the unity of the body to give that balance now my refusal to align with the body will make me mentor people along a line and very soon you will see a pattern of deficiency in a particular dimension it was produced by we preachers 
so i can you can see people who are prosperous powerful but they have no regard for spiritual things no regard no intelligence no nothing excellence yes sir administration yes sir leadership yes sir prosperity as much as we know financially speaking yes sir but their spirits are it's unfortunate the knowledge of god zero passion for god zero evangelism zero conformity to the life and the character of christ zero every time you see a prevalent pattern within a people the communicators the shapers the molders of their understanding are to be blamed and so i admit to you as a man of god that it is difficult to build people holistically it's very difficult very difficult because sometimes you will have to go out of your natural inclination with god to supply that balance but it is worth it if you love people are you getting what i'm saying our passions are not only dependent on the holy spirit they are also dependent on our age ranges please listen carefully this is not what i'm teaching tonight i just want to express something a young man seeking god from between the ages of 10 to maybe 25 or 30 because of the the reality that most likely a major part of that young man's life in terms of needs and all of that is being there is usually someone who is helping him out with his decisions with resources are we together so it is justifiable that that young man does not seem to see any need in developing his mind and trying to make sure that resources are available for instance a man of 35 to 50 has his passions altered because children have come into the equation their development has come into the equation there are responsibilities at this point the implication of your life and your decisions no longer affect you alone they affect society is that true they affect the faith of another person they affect the destinies of the young ones that you are raising biologically or otherwise and then a man who is from 50 upwards his passions his interest is also different so you have to be careful you have to look at these factors in opening your spirit to be mentored are you listening to what i'm saying if i listen to a man of 65 years or 70 years he has a lot to tell me in terms of experience and knowledge but the truth is that it will be unfair for my desire and interest and passions to be forced to resonate with him i will find out that that conformity will affect my growth process are you getting what i'm saying so when god calls a man god does not only give you a message god gives you an age range where your message and ministry becomes effective most preachers don't know this if i preach to elderly people now of say maybe 60 years to 80 years let me tell you the truth they are not going to be touched by my message they will only be impressed that the things they learned old i learned young at the end of that message they won't stand up and say my i couldn't sleep no there is nothing i would tell them that is worth lacking sleep the mistake has been made the lessons have been learned their focus is on pouring their lives to a younger generation please listen to me don't hate anybody but be careful who mentors you because you will be a reproduction of not only the mindset but the interests the perspectives is important the bible says david served his generation served his generation a man can be talking to you who has estates a man can be talking to you who has 30 branches as a pastor a man can be talking to you who has raised sons and daughters around the world and the truth is he does not really have any need 
a man can be talking to you from the perspective of his sabbath he has entered his sabbath experientially there are some things that he will not have the time to teach you are we together they will be focusing on maintaining certain levels not helping you get there because he has arrived there and chances are that when you learn from him you will only maintain your current level he's teaching you maintenance not growth are we together the way i teach and guide people 10 15 years ago i'm still a young man but it's not the same context are we together people are married now they have families their needs are shifting their needs are changing so a young man can have a fellowship where 99 percent of the people are unmarried 99 percent are students just got admission the context of his teaching his example his emphasis i don't expect that kind of person to be teaching on love and relationship and all of that no the the messages in that kind of cycle should be very finite god the holy spirit pressing into god are we together there's no issue of counseling over love and relationship I, I, it's on seriousness at that level because the the epicenter of their pursuit should be god to know him but a good leader not just a man of god must be able to bring relevant teachings that align with the transitory processes of people's lives otherwise a time will come where your message may be powerful but no longer relevant you see people only stay under you when they can see the applicability of your messages not the power that is dispensed from them you will be surprised that your message can become so powerful but the context of your communication no longer fits those people so you must learn are you getting blessed I don't want you to fail in life spiritually and otherwise so my assignment is not just to bring the word of God the power of the Holy Ghost my assignment is to be sensitive and to bring the teachings as we all transition together are we together so that children will not come and you find out that in everything you've learned about God there was no provision to grow spiritually while taking care of your family then you have to live your spiritual life to take care of your family because the preacher did not tell you in his teaching you you know God based on his teaching only if you don't have children but now when you have children there is no system of incorporating other things and the pursuit of God when he was teaching you how to know God you were probably a student who had all the time but right now you are not only a worker you are a supervisor and he's still giving you the template of someone who has eight hours free to love god are you seeing that now and that may no longer work and you will feel guilty that because you could not do the things you were doing before the way you are doing them based on his interpretation he will make you feel you are backsliding not knowing that every face has a strategy for remaining spiritual are you getting what i'm saying now if you don't learn this a day will come certain quality of people will never come to your church because your message does not capture god as presented to people within that frame of influence remember he told elijah eat for the journey is far by the time you become a managing director who may be in a country just for two months in a whole year the man of god must be able to bring a strategy for spiritual growth that will give you the same result as an idle student who has eight hours in his disposal otherwise you will find out that you apply your your eight hours with god every day formula and you find out that you are knowing god but your company is crashing and then you say kai what is all this then he will tell you leave the company and focus on god then you focus on god and find out that something about your life is becoming ineffective many believers are afraid because the things they used to do the transitions in their lives no longer afford them all the time again i never would have believed 
that my life would be this busy and this occupied time is gold for me you see that that means there must be a system of time redemption such that my spiritual life does not suffer and other things also will not suffer are you getting blessed so we have people who know god but they are not blessed we have people who get to a point and certain kinds of people cannot come to hear the word of god upon their lips the reason is because they do not have an applicable message or a pattern that ministers christ to them being a man of god is not just having power and the ability to speak hallelujah I used to preach a lot faster than I do now but I came to a point where I had to ask myself what exactly is the purpose of preaching what is the purpose of communication and I found out that the purpose is understanding it is terrible to have people sit under you for many years and really never understand you you may be impressed by their shouting Woo! and you will be so flattered let me tell you the truth with all humility you see there are levels when god brings you to every point that you are under pressure to prove has been proven so settle down and build people you see that yes i will be a foolish person at this level of my life to be proving that the anointing of the spirit is upon me to be proving whether i have access to revelations or not it's not pride these realities have been proven the thing to prove now is the hand of god by the lives you raise now you can go on to a secondary school or a campus and see a young guy under pressure for someone to shout under the anointing because at that level he's seeking for validation so his pressure will be that the, if at the end of that meeting only two people fall he can go back and lock the door for three days say lord what happened that's the reason why you see people like papa Ia Deboe. they just come and say the lord bless you and i mean they are so not concerned whether you shout or not they, they know what they are giving you it's up to you to believe whether you have it or not someone can be falling in their presence and truly speaking you see that they are not interested the point has been proven you can't keep proving a point forever you must win yourself out of that childishness and focus on building people my pride now let me tell you this at the level god has brought me by his grace my pride is no longer my results my pride is your results if i celebrate my results now tea and bread say everybody come and look god gave me tea it's a sign that i've failed god has been fair enough to me now my own result is your result are you seeing that now so my focus has shifted it's not just on myself god has helped me god has tried for me i will be wicked to still think about myself i don't go to preach and wondering will they give me an honorarium and if yes how much will it be no no my heart god sees is that lord you have helped me you have granted me understanding now lord let your word prevail over your people you see that so that from nowhere a young man rises with a strange level of grace a family is able to capture dimensions of god that they can reveal you are finding purpose you are finding your place in life you are causing and stirring revivals across territories this for me is my joy a time must come fatherhood is not all about growing old it's all about pouring yourself into people and witnessing with all humility the consistency of the truths of god the truths of the kingdom that make men great are finite you can know them it is the pursuit of god that is infinite are you getting what i'm saying 
the, the keys that you need to piece together like you can get to a final year and your lecturer say you are finished you say i finished what you say you finished the course it doesn't mean you have finished learning but you have safely exhausted all that it takes to be awarded a certificate that can happen in the spirit that you can learn the things you need to know about certain things and god says now your message is clear your priority what keeps you fresh now it's not just new revelations but the freshness of his presence that's why in old age you will still be fat and flourishing because you are planted are we together when you listen to papa deboe or you listen to benny hill and they talk the truth is that most of what they say will not necessarily be new to you but why do you receive it it comes with a freshness that 45 years of me has not eroded are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. God sees my heart. I detest a ministry where only the man of God or the man of God and a few people, they are the ones who are prayer warriors. They are the ones who are loving God. They are the ones who are conforming into his character. And then there is a, there are the masses of followers as we call them, who broke, weak, don't know God and for many years they remain loyal to that anointing it's not God's way of doing things three years was enough for Jesus to build certain people and after that like the foxes of Samson he released them he said guys I know you want me to stay but it is expedient that I go because it's time for you to be on the stage too and did they succeed they turned the world upside down I look at a few people who God is helping God is helping all of us but I look at us and our spiritual results I look at our financial results I look at our results of influence and all and I'm telling you my heart is gladdened I know I remain committed to helping you become something that you may not understand now or appreciate but at the end of your life i still say it again you will stand back and watch yourself and say god so this is where you are going to take me to hallelujah pray in one minute say lord where i have not been attentive to you take away my pride take away that pride give me the grace My son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings do not let them depart from out of your mouth keep them in the midst of your heart it says they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh of God within me rise let that entrepreneur within me rise let that Deborah let that Milka let that Hannah Rachel within me rise this is why I am here let that man of kingdom influence within me rise it is for your glory it is for your kingdom an heir as long as he's a child differeth not from a slave but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed lord i will listen hallelujah Tonight I'm going to teach us briefly, just very briefly, just to prepare the ground for the seven days. By the way, please, I don't want you to miss any of these days. 
I'm, my heart is already excited because of what God is going to be doing. Your life will so change it will surprise you. We're going to be sharing mysteries and we're going to be praying. One mystery per day that you handle and it just sets you on fire and we'll pray. We're going to have a time of intense prayer. Praying in the spirit. Repositioning yourself. Times of encounters. Times of restoration. Of mantles. Of graces. Times of opening of new spiritual dimensions. Yes. The prophetic is there but needs to be enlarged. The apostolic is there but needs to be enlarged. It's true that the healing ministry is there but it needs to be enlarged. Capacity. Please don't miss it. This is not some activity of men. No. Seven o'clock you are here. No matter how long it takes to start, just be here anywhere. If you, there is no space somewhere. This is not a koinonia program. This is a visitation that God is bringing to the land. It will be a time of strange miracles. Few hours. But the impact will linger upon your spirit. Make sure you fast. Please fast. Let the little children fast. Give them a little time. They may not be able to fast six to six. But except you are pregnant or under medical supervision, then that, that's all right. But even at that, doesn't mean you just eat anything anyhow. Are we together? Let your spirit be alive. Please. Off, off, useless movies, films. Just suspend it for a while. I beg you. They don't have to be wrong. All these social media distractions minimize it. Focus on God. Focus on God. Let what will play from your phone and your screens be worship. Give God one week and let him expand you. You can't put new wine in an old wine skin. So let God replace the wine skin so that it can take something heavier for the seasons that are coming. Hallelujah. The protocol department will make arrangements. We'll try to see how the buses will be available at least to bring in people and we'll try to finish on time. But it's going to be seven days of fire in this place. Seven days of the strange move of the spirit. Epochal revelations of the truth of God's word that if and when you handle them will turn your life around. Hallelujah. Don't come alone. Invite someone. Years ago, when I went for an Arbonke crusade, there was no seat. I stood there for six hours. Six solid hours. Because I was hungry. When you are hungry, you don't even see the color of the cloth of your neighbor. Your eyes are fixed. He said, if your eye be single, your heart will be full of life. Don't just come to hear, come to see. You can argue with what you hear, but you cannot argue with what you see. I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower so that I will see what the Lord will say. The Lord is saying, but my seeing. It is what you see that you get, not just what you hear. Put a strong burden in my heart this night. Just a few minutes. Let's talk about it. The spirit of wisdom. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word, and I will forever sing your praise. Your spirit, I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing. Joy. I will see of the wonders of your word, and I will forever sing your praise. James chapter 1, verse 5. Forever sing your praise. Forever sing your praise. The Bible says, If any of you 
lack wisdom so the bible tells us it is possible that a man can lack wisdom it does not stop him from being a human being it is possible to live without the wisdom of god at work in you and it says if any of you lack wisdom the question here before we read on is how do you know you lack wisdom because you only ask when you don't have it but how do i know that i do not have wisdom because remember the bible says every man is right in his own eyes so based on what parameter what parameter do i use to arrive at the conclusion that i am bankrupt of wisdom there is nobody i know on earth with the exception of few people who will admit that they are not wise is that true you try telling somebody who considers himself a gentleman and say i don't think you are exactly wise then you think the person will laugh at you and say wow i'm just learning that no you're going to have a big problem the person is not wise me am i a madman do i look like one but the bible says if any of you realizes that he lacks wisdom so the first assignment is not to ask the first assignment is to find out how do you know that the wisdom of god that the spirit of wisdom is working in your life are we together now there must be a system in the kingdom that god has provided to help men understand so i can come to the conclusion because you see as human beings it is very difficult for us to admit that certain things are not working in our lives especially for believers we are people of faith and sometimes we can exaggerate it and admitting the deficiency of certain qualities in our lives it's not natural for men to admit are we together now yes when you tell someone he can't cook say no 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 i can cook what are you? i mean this is it you are evidently seeing that this meal is not servable and the person is saying i can cook because in his eyes this is a wonderful meal are we together you are seeing a gentleman who is not looking smart and you're saying no 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 you are not dressing smart say, no 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 i mean as far as i'm concerned i'm very very okay so it is difficult i'm explaining to you this this if any man lack wisdom it's a very deep process to arrive at a point let me tell you realizing whatever makes you come to a point where you know you do not have wisdom has to be the spirit of god the arrogance of men does not allow for that level of admission we can secretly desire to be wiser we can secretly admire individuals who the spirit of wisdom is evidently working in but to outspokenly admit no it's very uncomfortable are we together but the bible says if any of you lack wisdom let him ask who let him ask of god that give it unto how many men so the manifestation of the wisdom of god in the life of a believer is not privy to certain intelligent people it's not privy to apostles and prophets no the giving of this operation of the spirit is given to all men he says he does so liberally and then an upbraided not and it shall be given that means if i look at your life and i do not see wisdom i am safe to conclude at certain things number one that you have not received and you receive not because you have not asked and you ask not because you have not seen the deficiency in your life are you seeing that now that means if you look at my life and your life and i am bankrupt of the wisdom of god not the wisdom of men that comes to naught the wisdom of God if it is not in my life the Bible says if I ask it should be given so if it is not in my life and God is benevolent it means that I have not genuinely asked and I have not asked because I have not seen the need and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped 
that means something about my understanding i have indoctrinated myself into believing that i have sufficient wisdom let me tell you the formula that the bible designed for men to know whether there is wisdom in their lives or not wisdom is very vocal the bible says wisdom is justified by her children wisdom is justified by her children there are fruits in your life and my life that validates the presence of wisdom there has to be fruits in your life and my life there are things i cannot as a human being be sure of whether you have them or not i leave that to god wisdom is not part of those because if the wisdom of god is functioning in the life of an individual it is justified by the results children there talks of the results the proceedings that come from a life that is under the influence of wisdom so how do you know tonight whether or not the wisdom of god and more so the spirit of wisdom is at work very simple look at your results look at your life unbiasedly look at your life unashamedly and then you can come to the conclusion that mm -mm, the repetition of pain the repetition of failure listen carefully the repetition of struggle the repetition of hardship the repetition of the absence of the power the grace the favor of god in your life is a testament that the spirit of wisdom may not be at work in you the spirit of god is at work in you but that dimension of wisdom may not be at work in you are you blessed lack of the wisdom of god is what is responsible for the anxiety of men you know what it means to be anxious worrisome the fear that plagues people you will always fear until you know what to do and he himself knew what he ought to do the bible took out time to talk about anxiety philippians chapter 4 and when you read from verse 6 to 7 it says be anxious for nothing please give it to us let's let's look at it before we, we talk some more about wisdom it says be the word careful there does not just mean be careless it means be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer we see prayer again you leave that we're going to touch that later but it says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to god there is an information that can take away anxiety anxiety let me tell you something it's not proof that satan is around you is proof that the spirit of wisdom is not at work in your life it's an uncomfortable truth we must admit our world is full of people dying of anxiety where will this come from where will i mean what? no no the pain and fear jesus took half of a whole chapter to talk about worry spoke about the birds of the air that break a spiritual law that is responsible for abundance it says yet your father yet not solomon arrayed in all of his splendor and apparel is like one of these anxiety is proof that the spirit of wisdom is not at work anxiety stems from uncertainty there is a level of uncertainty that is around our lives financially speaking spiritually speaking so you are about to um, do certain things embark on your life's journey and then because of the gaps of uncertainty you find out that there is worry and anxiety unbelief comes in fear comes in because of fear you become self-centered because you are aware that something about you will fail so you become possessive self-centered angry and all these other elements come in I found a very interesting scripture we're going to read it and then i'll define for you what wisdom is psalms 119 
from verse 98 to 100. Psalms 119 from verse 98 to 100. Are we there? Read it please. One to read. Ah uh ah. -uh. One to read. Thou through their, thy commandments have made me wiser than my enemies for they are ever before me. Next verse. I have more understanding than all my teachers for your testimonies are my meditation. The last verse. I understand more than the ancient. Stop, stop. Don't rush it. I understand more than my enemies. You made me wiser than my enemies. You made me wiser than my teachers. And you made me wiser than the ancient. And there is a key. We are coming there. Are we together? It says, Thou by thy commandments, by thy laws, ah, you have made me wiser wiser than my enemies so i can rise wiser than my teachers wiser than the ancients because i have kept your secret psalms 104 verse 24 psalm 104 verse 24 oh lord how manifold are thy works everybody say results i want you to read it just the first line but change works with results ready one to read oh lord how manifold are thy results how did the results come about in wisdom thou has made them all lord i look at your life and is full of mighty works results and the psalmist was careful to let us know that they did not just happen because you are God. It is by engaging wisdom, wisdom, that these possibilities have been made manifest. And the earth is full of your riches, which is one of the results that you have produced in wisdom. There is a relationship between results and wisdom. There is a relationship between riches and wisdom. How manifold. How multifaceted, how awe-inspiring are your works? What is wisdom? I put a definition here. Wisdom is possessing scriptural solutions. Scriptural solutions to life's challenges and engaging them appropriately wisdom is possessing scriptural solutions to life's challenges and engaging them appropriately possessing scriptural solutions to life's challenges and engaging them appropriately what is wisdom knowing what to do and doing it wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it if there is no doing it is not wisdom wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it possessing the scriptural solution there are many solutions there are many ways that seem it right unto a man but the end thereof will justify what way he took. So scriptural solutions to life's challenges. And then having the possession of those solutions, you engage them appropriately. You are wise if you do that. Are we together? So you have wisdom to the degree to which we see you preferring scriptural solutions to the challenges that are around your life and others. And the results that they produce many people listen to me do not possess this quality and there is an operation of the spirit 
that can make men to have this quality lavishly that regardless of your age listen carefully regardless of your educational background regardless of what your level of orientation that you can be um you can have a an influence of this dimension of the holy spirit at work in your life and all of a sudden your life opens up wonder after wonder a comprehension of the scriptural solutions listen to me if i ask everyone now write your prayer request and bring it here right now there are people who are going to ask for pages not pieces of papers every one thing that you are writing is in need of an answer is that true the bible says the spirit of wisdom is able to route you in a way and manner that you possess the keys that it takes to turn that request into your testimony and then the fortitude to engage the laws you now know until the results become evident in your life is called wisdom proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7 to 9 proverbs chapter 4 please don't trivialize what i'm teaching you tonight wisdom is the principal thing it's using a business terminology now wisdom is the principal thing it says therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting get understanding verse 8 exalt her personifies wisdom now exalt her like you would do a lady you love exalt her is that true like you see a man treat his wife that he so loves he says exalt her and there is a reward for exalting her prize her above all else and she shall do what what is responsible for promotion it is true that god is the lifter of men but the dimension of him that lifts men is his wisdom meaning if you are in a position for a long time it's not just an attack from hell but it's a sign that the spirit of wisdom is not at work the spirit of wisdom creates motion in your life it not only creates motion it creates an upgrade to your life it is because of the presence of this possibility that the bible says the path of the just is like the shining light that shines ever brighter onto the perfect day exalt her and she shall promote thee now listen ah. it says she shall bring thee to honor it did say she shall bring thee honor honor is here it's not just a it's not just an attribute it's a realm of existence that wisdom can like an usher say follow me i will lead you somewhere regardless of your background as a preacher as a businessman as a mother a father wisdom can usher you and whilst you follow her foolishly you will get into a realm the name of that realm is honor not a, an event it is how you live honor that wisdom can bring a man to honor when thou dost embrace her are we together like ruth held on to naomi i'm not leaving you i have seen the value of your presence in my life your god will be my god your people will be my people exalt her and she shall promote thee she shall bring thee to honor this is what people are looking for they are looking for promotion in the spirit they are looking for promotion in finances promotion in influence men of god are struggling trusting god increasing membership increasing whatever this is the formula god gives us and we ignore him and then we keep searching around verse 9 this is what the bible says she shall give to thy head hallelujah an ornament of grace a crown of glory shall she deliver who is the she here wisdom wisdom that for embracing wisdom it can veto your background 
it can veto any other thing in your life brothers and sisters and bring you to this possibility this is the realm that we all desire to get there and the bible tells you that the way to get there is wisdom are we together yes the bible says through wisdom a house is built a house is built not through desire through desire the intention to build is there but the actual building is true wisdom this ministry brothers and sisters you see was built and is being maintained by wisdom every great man and woman you acknowledge around the world every great enterprise that you see and admire everyone who has come to a position of influence in the kingdom has done so by the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom years ago i was listening to pat robinson the founder of cbn 700 club and he said as a young man when he was about to start ministry he said he went to the lord he said lord i'm a young man about to start give me three things number one he said give me wisdom number two he said give me favor number three he said give me the anointing of the spirit ah i went back to god too and i said lord thank god i'm still young number one give me wisdom boy i stayed there before moving to favor because i knew that that wisdom I, I, my life was so bankrupt of it how else would i have gotten it our society is full of unwise people it's not an insult it's a description they are sincere people but their decisions and their results are very clear that the wisdom of god of god not sophia not human wisdom we're talking of a dimension of wisdom here that has nothing to do with age and not necessarily education and all of that the wisdom of god the faculty to produce result as god at god's level the spirit of wisdom deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9 the reason why joshua excelled was not just that he was anointed joshua always had the anointing the anointing was there but the bible says and joshua the son of Nun, was full of what the spirit of wisdom he was already full of the spirit and yet moses was told to lay hands on him how do you lay hands on someone who is already filled with the spirit and joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom not full of wisdom full of the spirit of wisdom for moses had laid his hands upon him and the children of israel hearkened unto him and he did as the lord commanded moses joshua full of the spirit of wisdom joshua full of the spirit of wisdom no wonder when moses died there was nothing much for god to tell him again he said moses my servant is dead joshua my only encouragement is for you to be strong you already have the spirit of wisdom mm. you have it just be strong you are a young man and i know that leading these people is difficult but there is a spirit in you you will lead them in a way that will make you a wonder leadership is by the spirit of wisdom let me tell you this listen any man on earth listen to me carefully any man on earth and in the kingdom that multitudes are listening to him respect him human beings are not stupid are you hearing what i'm saying you can have a crowd of foolish people but there is a level to which there is there is a level to which human beings will not be more foolish than that jesus went up the mountain and a crowd followed him there was something he was telling them there was something contained in his teachings i commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise not knowledgeable hidden is a principle that can bring solutions to your pain ah. there are families that if they knew this 
weeping will stop it's true there are individuals that if they know this weeping will stop he said i wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll and the elder tapped me and said weep not the book can be opened when the book is open then tears i look at times in my life when i was so bankrupt of certain dimensions of wisdom and i looked at the tears that came from my eyes but no more his wisdom has come hmm. i will sing of the wonders of your word i will sing out for joy i will sing of the wonders of your word and i will forever sing your praise and for preachers we need this so much you know most times we don't start ministry with wisdom we start ministry with passion passion and then your passion leads you to spiritual activities that bring certain dimensions of the anointing and then while the ministry starts going at a point you hook in one place still anointed but wisdom you can't move further because the promoter is wisdom the exalter is wisdom the one who brings you to the realm of honor is wisdom herein lies the answer to the dilemma we see that gifted people still don't rise because to be gifted and to be wise are two different things you can be full of so much anointing and yet live an unrewarded life and yet not be able to rise in the spirit but god is changing someone's story in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god i have watched people do you know um sometimes i sit down and i look at people truly speaking when i look at people i fight tears because i know what they are doing wrong i don't fight tears because of their situation i know i fight tears because i can explain why their lives are that way i have seen well-meaning lovely men and women of god that i love and honor with all my heart but I look at their lives the same way my life was and I know where they are missing it. Please, no result is a mistake. Please learn this. You may not understand what is being engaged, but there is something being engaged to produce that outcome. You may not understand what is being engaged, but there is something being engaged. A man does not just become powerful. No, no a man does not just last in ministry a man does not just become anointed brothers and sisters please listen to me the fact that you don't know what is being done does not mean something is not being done your miracle is when the solution comes and when the grace to apply it is released then you know that challenge has come to an end Isaiah 11 tells us there is a real spirit of wisdom, verse 2. That the Holy Spirit can manifest in a man as wisdom. Notice that even for the building of the tabernacle and in the Lord's house, God did not allow people to be involved carelessly. The spirit of wisdom had to come upon them to produce God's desired results. If the spirit of wisdom comes upon your ministry, your ministry will change in a way not just from human terms you will find out that the possibilities that only god can produce is what happens in your life years ago i'm not a social media person but the lord spoke to me revealing the strategy for the next level of ministry and this is what the lord told me i said lord how will your word get to people and all of that yes we're going to have a tv ministry but that's for another time but how is it going to happen and this is what the lord told me at that time they sell messages you don't upload messages online and the lord said this is the strategy don't sell any message let the messages be packaged and put it online 
I will give it wings to the ends of the earth. The wisdom of God. It never made sense then. What is this? Who has the time to download heavy MBs of an audio, not video? People are not, I mean, when somebody can buy a CD and slot it. Who do you think you are? But when his wisdom comes in, something that looks so foolish, go around Jericho seven times. Just go around. It has never been done. Oh God, just go around. And at the seventh time, that act of wisdom crashes down Jericho brothers and sisters that one act till today this ministry will never recover from it that one act in obedience to the spirit of wisdom that's it hmm. i live to praise your name i have no fear of what tomorrow brings the spirit of wisdom is what is responsible for being able to afford the bills of ministry please hear me there is no ministry except you want to manipulate people don't be angry at men of god that you see manipulating people for let me tell you you are doing ministry and you want to work in financial integrity and still work in financial abundance you've got to receive an impartation of the spirit of wisdom otherwise it will wear your grace out you will cry one day to death You need it in your life. There are many Christian homes that is very clear the spirit of wisdom is not there. The decisions are always leading to pain. The decisions are always leading to retrogression. Remember I told you that wisdom is justified by her children. So if I claim the spirit of wisdom is in my life and everything I do is moving me back, I should check something is wrong. Something is wrong. There are men of God who are going back and back and back. There are individuals going back. They are better yesterday than they are today. No matter what kind of prayer you pray for them. I've seen individuals that I didn't see for a long time. And you look at them and their lives are a tragedy. They are still serving the Lord. That's the painful part. They never, they, they didn't backslide. Still passionate. And you say, why is your life like this? Are these your children? Yes, sir. Why are they like this? of god god is faithful no sir don't 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 that does not look like faithfulness is god challenging us some of our parents are pastors they've been pastors for many years i'm not talking about finances no growth there is no day that the ministry breaks through that you can say sinners have been saved lives have been transformed pain after pain let me tell you repetition of pain it's a sign that you need the spirit of wisdom. It is the principal thing the Bible says. It is the principal thing. There are ministries that rise and fall. They rise to a level. They are doing so well. And then at a point you find out that things start to nosedive. No scandal. No nothing. Just they have exhausted the level of wisdom that can take them beyond that level. And they come down the scriptural solution to life's problem and the fortitude to engage it appropriately is called wisdom standing let me use someone come come show standing between this gentleman and his destiny whether it is spiritually speaking whether it is financially speaking the obstacle other forces are there like favor and the rest but it is wisdom that tells you what to do for other forces you know why the bible says it is the principal thing because all other forces depend on it it is when you engage the truths that are received from heaven that other forces now start coming into play the anointing this and that it is wisdom that shows you what to do for the anointing to be multiplied in your life it is wisdom that tells you what to do for favor to be activated it is wisdom that tells you what to do for restoration to come all other manifestations are dependent on wisdom so in the interim there are many other forces but the principal force wisdom are we together 
So I do not, I know that I should get there. I know that if favor comes, I will arrive there. I know that there is a way I can be healed. I know that there is a way the prophetic gift can be multiplied. But what is that way? What is that way? And how do I engage it? It is the spirit of wisdom that has brought forth these seven days of divine visitation. Because there is something that you can engage that will bring other things. And then the spirit of wisdom comes. I can show you a man that is carrying the spirit of wisdom. His results. Her results. It is true. Wisdom is justified by her children if you accept this thing tonight then we can finish up that verse if any of you lack results if any of you lack results if you lack results you lack wisdom if any of you lack results if your spiritual life lacks potency if your finances lack potency, if your influence and your leadership and whatever it is that you're involved in lacks potency, no promotion, no growth, nobody desires your grace. You are living an unrewarded life, spiritually and otherwise. It says that if you lack this, it's a sign that the wisdom of God is not at work in you. Hallelujah. Let me share with you very briefly how the spirit of wisdom works this is the core of what i'm teaching tonight most people are aware we've taught several teachings on the holy spirit and we've taught on wisdom you can make reference to my teaching what wisdom is this but the operation how it works is where i think that most people have not been able to access it Mm. how is the spirit of wisdom how does it operate how do I activate the spirit of wisdom so that it produces for me ready let's finish up the scripture James chapter 1 and verse 5 James chapter 1 verse 5 there is wisdom in the name of Jesus. There is wisdom in the name of Jesus. If, if any one of you lack results, which is a product of lack of wisdom, what's the first thing? Let him ask. You have not because you ask not not because god is unable to give it let him ask let him ask let him pray let him raise up a petition from a desperate heart that when i begin to pray my prayer not only brings the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom but also activates its operation if prayer can bring wisdom then prayer can make it work too are we together now yes let him pray i can know a man functioning under the influence of the spirit of god by the results that come from his prayer not just his prayer i need to see the results that come from your prayer the reason why many ministries have poor prayer meetings is because over time People have concluded that prayer does not work. They cannot see the results from it. Do you know that praying in the spirit captures something the Bible calls the hidden wisdom of God that the princes of this world did not know? It says, for if they had known this, they would not crucify the Lord of glory. There was something Paul was doing while he was praying and praying in the spirit that began to grant him access prayer activates the operation of the spirit of wisdom not just bringing the anointing in your life the functionality the operation of the spirit of wisdom is released as you pray while they prayed 
they didn't know what to do how do we advance the gospel across this territory they prayed and they fasted and the spirit of wisdom came separate me paul and barnabas this is a strategy they stood before jericho listen when you know that the spirit of wisdom is with you you will never fear when you see challenges all you need to know is to wait till the answer come many of us never wait we go ahead and say let the answer follow me and we call it faith and it damages us into pieces may never live to have a second chance when joshua got before jericho the bible says the fence of jericho could host five chariots fortified tooth and nail to a point that a prostitute could comfortably live in the fence the fence of jericho was like cgc how do you penetrate the place do you shoot is it an arrow is it a gun do you jump the spirit of wisdom he said don't worry they circumcised themselves and set their heart apart and an angel just came and revealed the strategy do this do that and the lord spoke the spirit of wisdom go around the city seven times and on the seventh day go around seven times the spirit of wisdom many of the things that we call prophecy is prophecy yes but what was uttered is the wisdom of god go and bath seven times go and bath seven times it is the solution not to all problems to your problem meaning someone else will do it not directed by god and not get any solution you see that the spirit of wisdom is god's customized solution for your challenges it's not generic it's personal that's why i said it is not it is not the wisdom of the world the wisdom of the world is is universal in application like you say if someone is hungry eat god can tell you if you are hungry dance now that does not make sense but that is his solution for you go and bath seven times and the guy felt insulted Abba, i'm a captain of the syrian army and he went to bath the seventh time the bible says his skin became fresh you see let me tell you this is the mystery behind people doing what does not make sense and still getting results they are not making sense is that they are doing it as directed the spirit of wisdom came whatever he tells you to do do it this is the fountain of wisdom mary knew she did they would have said ah jesus look 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 the the person who sells this wine is here he can tell you jews were not foolish people they knew how to crush wine for kings whatever he tells you do notice that no single miracle of jesus was repeated twice the results were repeated many times but the manifestation of wisdom brought a unique solution for every issue at a certain time he spat on the ground and put in someone's eyes at a certain time he did something else look at him but we keep repeating the same thing and we just faith comes by hearing hearing what the wisdom of god when his wisdom comes to you then you get up and do what he told you to do then your life becomes a wonder lord where are we going to get the venue for this meeting i saw in my visions overflow lord i can active your venue. i can use my brain to look at several venues which venue in zaria will contain the crowds you are showing me just keep praying Shaka bakata kata bata. cgc the spirit of wisdom see that as at the time the lord spoke the building had not even been expanded this when the spirit of wisdom speaks don't doubt you can walk on water and every other person who is walking sings except you because the spirit of wisdom is the dimension of the holy spirit that will ensure that what you see this is what makes the life of certain people look miraculous you are doing the same thing but they come and do it and get strange results because they don't do it as desired they wait faith waits until wisdom speaks you don't just act carelessly just because you know no. wisdom is manifested in prayer when we pray 
the spirit of wisdom begins to speak learn this most of us we are so distracted in our prayer that we do not hear the communications of the spirit of wisdom lord what is the way out to this predicament and challenge in my life and the lord says pray and we pray after five minutes we say god you are not speaking please good night and we just we cheat ourselves there you don't pray as long as you want you pray till the answer comes it's not the issue of 10 minutes or one hour it is when it comes there is an object to your prayer and you begin to pray when 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 cgc became full and the overflows became full it was obvious that when there was a program here there was no other venue that could take us lord what is going to be the way out of this when you know this you know that there's nothing called impossible impossible is the name given to the state before the arrival of the wisdom of god when the wisdom of god comes it will turn a mountain i tell you into a level plain ground is god speaking to you hmm. And all of a sudden, I was praying one time. And the Lord said, because of this, every time Friday night is not available, Sunday night will be available. As simple as it is, that ended the issue of trying to look for all of these things. Lord, the overflows are full now to the roadside. What do we do next? By his wisdom, God was able to profess solution. And we're able to host people. Overflow three is bigger than overflow one, two, and three and i mean overflow one and two together the wisdom of god you see you never see how it would have happened until wisdom creates the way then you look and say ah, why didn't i think about it because your small brain cannot think about it my brother you need the wisdom of god joseph after he finished interpreting the dream then the spirit of wisdom came hear the spirit of wisdom speaking let pharaoh find a man who is discreet and wise and appoint him over this and that when there was problem and the people were arguing and it was almost killing moses moses could not do his work because there were so many people and god told him mr man you are going to kill yourself let the spirit of wisdom guide you set men thousands and hundreds and fifties and then appoint elders to take care of them then you just play supervisory roles ah, and moses found rest he would have died and said it's the will of god how many pastors die because they love god but there is no manifestation of the spirit of wisdom to guide the affairs by the grace of god one of the principles that help in my being efficient in ministry is the fact that by his wisdom we have created a robust leadership structure that allows me to focus on the ministry of word and prayer i don't have to come here in the afternoon to check to say ah i hope these people did their duty through wisdom a house is built is god speaking to us everybody say prayer, prayer. shout it prayer that means if the devil attacks your prayer life what is he attacking he's attacking the arrival of a scriptural solution that brings testimonies for you when you set yourself apart to pray and the devil said it does not matter among other things he's robbing you of access to the wisdom of god say i will pray shout it say i will pray, pray. men who pray access the wisdom of god they come up from their prayer life with very strange solutions very very strange solutions sometimes solutions that don't make sense do not do not downplay on a leader that knows how to get wisdom through prayer when you say we have come to our wit's end then you see another dimension of grace and wisdom number two how is wisdom activated wisdom is activated through meditation meditation noisy people sorry for you this is where the devil cheats us we live in a noisy society if you are not making noise your phone is making noise if your phone is not making noise the television is making noise if the television is not making noise the well wishers around your house are making noise our lives are full of noise that cheats us there is a dimension of wisdom that only silence can bring meditation great leaders meditate 
you sit down thank you there's got to be a way out thank you holy spirit and you sit quietly you know sometimes i do this from morning till night meditating like a fool sometimes i just kneel down in front of my chair and put my head down i'm waiting waiting and the answer will never come till sometimes late in the night the spirit of wisdom comes majestically doesn't come in a rush and foolishly and carelessly if you don't have patience forget about it because you will not come sometimes you finish all of those things you are prayed in the night you just wake up to stretch a little and fire falls from heaven and you sit down this is it this is it <laughs> it will break every chain break every chain break every chain it will break every chain break every chain break every chain is the wisdom of god working in your life oh i fell down the other day when you said receive wisdom do you meditate no sir then the spirit of wisdom may be there but you're not aligning sufficiently that's why many men of god don't have messages to preach because they write a list of messages and preach one by one and they finish the 35th one and the year is not even up to half the year is not halfway gone and you wonder what do i do inspiration comes in the place of meditation never forget what does it mean to meditate to ponder ponder not just on anything to ponder on truth ponder on the word of god not just to mutter but to ponder to think it's called imagination it's not like imagination it is called imagination the creation of images by the spirit ah. genesis 11 before nimrod began to build he called the people and they began to meditate meditation is not just sitting down under a tree that's a wonderful um, um what they call it a wonderful way of stimulating meditation but meditation is where your mind is called to a point where it is stimulated to begin to create creativity is a product of meditation let me tell you how the spirit of wisdom works the spirit of wisdom is a creative spirit is the first dimension of the holy spirit we see in genesis chapter 1 creation the spirit of wisdom creates it creates solutions see what i'm teaching you is 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 a jackpot to your success in life if you understand it creation the solution to every problem you seek already exists in christ but there is a system of transporting it from the realm of the spirit it is called creation it is called the power of imagination where you give the holy spirit your mind like a woman's womb and you allow him to brood upon it that's what happens in meditation you offer like a wife gives her womb over to her husband to be implanted with a seed that's what happens many of us are not creators creation is not just by speaking it is out of the abundance of the heart when that incubation has happened then your speaking is among the process that makes it manifest not many people will teach you this thing i'm teaching you the spirit of wisdom will make your life a wonder if you know how it works watch jesus this woman was caught in adultery the very act of it this is a kind of question where both yes and no will chain you and jesus kept quiet and was writing the spirit of wisdom immediately the spirit of wisdom landed then he spoke he who does not have sin should cast the first stone and then the bible says his speech affected the oldest first you see you see how powerful wisdom is because the youngest can drop it and the oldest will say, are you, are you stupid pick that stone then he started with the oldest if the oldest has dropped the stone what do you do as the youngest the miracle is not in dropping the stone is who dropped it first the oldest dropped it down to the last person woman where are your accusers go neither do i condemn you 
is the spirit of wisdom it is the spirit of wisdom that suggested the strategy for the salvation of men mm. that instead of everybody dying let's make a caricature out of satan it's called the hidden wisdom let one man come and let the whole world enter in him then let him die so that one man came and satan kept looking for him at a point the holy ghost restrained his hand and satan began to prevail and satan manipulated men to kill jesus and he ran to hell he said demons did you watch what happened i can't believe it i killed jesus and to his shock he saw jesus in hell and he said no this is a joke you can't be in hell say yes i'm here because when you kill sinners they go to hell and so i died sin and here i am in hell give me the keys <sighs> give me the keys give me the keys give me the keys and when the keys were given to him he dislodged principalities and powers made a public show of them and then he not only resurrected he resurrected with many who had died they were in the streets of jerusalem everybody saw him and he said guys this is it you will um you will go to heaven but i have to be the firstborn among the resurrected so let me go to heaven quickly i'll come back and then you guys will go and he went to heaven poured his blood according to hebrews in the tabernacle became the high priest and then he returned the guys went and he went to the disciples all hail i'm back all power in heaven he disarmed satan not through power through wisdom are we together listen let me teach you something i walk in the anointing many results are not dependent on power force wisdom is really what brings dominion because the realm of the spirit is a legal realm you engage through knowledge not just by trying to force things it's the ministry of the angels to do that they are the enforcers of the word of god they confirm the word of the servant but wisdom is solution that's why sometimes you see me ministering to people and you see me doing stupid things i can hold somebody's hand and the holy spirit can say let that person shout jesus and the person just shout jesus and then the person is falling and you are watching me too i'm watching i'm as shocked as you we are all watching the wisdom of the spirit you will now get the formula and run to one small meeting and hold somebody's hand and tell the person to shout jesus and the person shouts and looks at you say i've done it say do it again because it was just copying this is one of the big mistake of we young ministers we copy acts without the spirit that brought them are we together yes meditation this is where many of us have missed it that you sit before the lord what's that song brooding over every darkness you are called listen light to shine from dark how can light come out of darkness that's what the bible says he said god who has commanded light to come out of darkness that means the answer is right there with you in your chaos the light the raw material sit down in that situation and meditate and let creation begin to happen when you plant corn the ugliness of the soil and it is still where the new shoot comes out of it's a principle he's brooding over every darkness you are causing light to shine in darkness you are brooding, brooding over all my darkness. You are causing light to shine from darkness. So in the midst of that financial hardship, sit down there. That's when creation happens. You're not going to run away from the challenge and get a solution somewhere. Sit in it by the rivers of babylon in the midst of the captivity i sat down there and a vision was open to me we run away from challenges the miracle is right there sit down the 
has got to be a way lord my wife no i prayed on there's got to be a way and all of a sudden you allow him to impregnate your mind ha. brothers and sisters i can tell you this your life will be a wonder first to you if you practice this it will be as if you are holding a charm or a genie somewhere that you are winding many of us don't sit down jobless people don't sit down to allow creation happen they just loiter around sir can you give me a job and god is saying i want to speak to you no oh god I'm, I'm, i mean I'm, I'm i want to marry they said I, I can't marry because i don't have a job me i want to and god said sit down now if we can take half the time we spend loitering around to sit down not worrying just find the back of one tree in the night and sit down when other people are snoring their destinies you sit quietly there's got to be a way to my life lord everything is not working nine prayer requests since last year nine of them not answered you are not a liar jesus speak to me and you are just playing you know i told i get who did i give an assignment was it us or school of ministry students no sometimes i don't know the difference but do it still do it go and play worship you don't just sit down and beds are just making noise worship doesn't distract you it steals your spirit and then you sit down sometimes for hours the flesh will never allow you sit down this flesh you see once you sit down you just start thinking ah but that lady is really beautiful you see don't stop still sit down there God, but my father do you know to be honest do you know that i didn't have a good upbringing don't worry this is the flesh trying to distract something a time will come your flesh will be frustrated it will give up it's one of the benefits of fasting the flesh is empowered by the health of your body it takes advantage of food so when when food is minimal it it alters the interruption of the flesh yes sir it does ultimately leading to boosting your faith but that's how it works and you sit down lord there has to be a way and the lord sits down and says but you know you have hundred thousand and then in scripture just opens up and now this is god the spirit of wisdom coming to you now and looks at it and says except a corn falls in the ground and the lord can speak to you and say that hundred thousand that is your last money i'm not saying do it go and sow it you are not doing donation just thinking about it and you carry yourself as if you are going to go and die and sow it somewhere the moment you do that the same spirit that spoke to you now goes to your uncle who doesn't like you and say remember i've been telling you you will bless somebody it's time now it's janet it's this person and then your uncle calls you wisdom justified by her children and you are surprised and god says keep trusting me like this for your life and then you sit down and you find out let me tell you how god forces the spirit of wisdom to work in you sometimes he will close the door of any physical help in your life pain is a very good way of activating wisdom some of us until you go through certain levels of pain wisdom will never work in your life it's not all pain that is demonic hear what i'm telling you you always receive hundred hundred thousand from your father so every time they are saying the wisdom of god you say yes but what you are mean is the money is coming and then your father says well um i had a dream and i didn't see myself giving you money for five months so what are you saying say exactly that um a voice spoke to me and that's the voice that has been speaking to me that i got rich that you are benefiting from the same voice said i should leave you alone you may insult and get angry but after two weeks you sit down and in your anger you frown you frown you frown and then you just open a scripture anyhow lord help me and then you just see takes you to the story of the widow in zarafat what did she do you have been reading it because your stomach is full now you read it with your stomach empty then child thy light break forth and you see something you never saw ah god commanded a woman but she was not aware she was commanded but the bible says god already commanded her 
could it, could it be that there was something she was not receiving because god told elijah i've commanded her whether she, the the message arrived to her or not is another thing but me i've commanded her but when elijah arrived it didn't look like she was aware i expect her to say oh you are the one you're welcome come in i mean the loaf is there the man said i'm about to die she would have died not hearing the command or seeing the prophet the same way god will say i've answered this person and you look at the person's life and the answer is not yet there i meditate a lot creation happens in my life through meditation i have explored the power of imagination this is not some zodiac scientology metaphysical thing this is a principle listen to the advice that god gave joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 let's attempt to round up he said this book of the law please give it to us shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shall meditate i thought i was do you know i literally was seeing it <laughs> truly speaking <laughs> you guys are delaying okay this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth listen but thou shall meditate therein meditate therein not meditate any other place you don't meditate on what you want you meditate on the word of god not just look at a newspaper and say hi again Boko Haram. and you are looking and you are thinking about a solution for your church it won't come that way are we together thou shall meditate there in day and night when you meditate and information will come from it then you observe to do and then your way becomes prosperous you don't act first you sit down and allow the creative force of god's wisdom come to your life lord my wedding is five months all we have is hundred thousand the budget is 2.5 there's got to be a way out not hi god you sent me mm, jesus talk to me my spirit is open i silence every voice of fear silence them first i silence every wicked voice that wants to make god look unfaithful in my life lord you are faithful and you are sitting down and the spirit of wisdom begins to move the spirit of wisdom can tell you to do anything he can just say call one person and you call the person and he says i'm going to do a transfer you will think it's hundred thousand you will see three million and god says now it has come go and marry your wife and other people will see you and say you that i know Abba, my brother and you you will quietly go back and give god glories ah god wisdom has covered for me that's why you see some people whose testimony should be like your own based on the physical parameters you see but their testimonies are a thousand times greater than yours wisdom bail them out someone needs to receive this wisdom tonight because the depending on men forever let god send them remember i told you all blessings come from god through men to you but when you begin to depend on men depending on men is addictive it's addictive those men can even be your father and your mother many of us who have all this right conscious mentality my father you are the one that gave birth to me you are 40 years you are still saying it and god may not cause what is happening in your family but you will see it as a ready tool and push you out and then you sit down and then you worry and call it meditation and god says no worrying i've stopped you from doing that but you sit down and you meditate let me admit to you that you will not meditate one night and get the solution no i wish it were so sometimes it can happen but that's just god's mercy helping you to encourage you so that the day that it doesn't come with the speed you want you will know god has been faithful and you will stay there are people who stay for weeks weeks turn to months every multi-millionaire knows this thing i'm telling you that their result is not just based on what they do but based on the reality that has been altered in their minds and their perceptions it is true way before god blessed this ministry with these crowds i had captured it it's there 
Do you believe what I've taught you tonight? My, my prayer for you is not just that you finish a service today and say, wow, nice. <clears throat> but that you go and sit down and say, Lord, I know I'm a prayer warrior, but there is no time in silence to sit quietly. Wake up in the night and think, Lord, what is the next key? What is the next step? There are bills before me. What is the next step? This is the dimension we must step into as a ministry. There has to be a way out. Don't say there is no way. Don't join Satan. Saying there is no way is calling God a liar. You open scripture. No. There is a way. Ah, light me Lord. Light me Lord. Light me Lord. Like a candle. Light me Lord. Light me Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light my life like a candle. Light me, Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. this thing i've taught you is the secret for the hand of god upon your life financially you will sit down and do business after business and business after business and be shocked that the result will be the same because out of the abundance of the heart what have you incubated in your spirit and your mind? It's not about doing things. You tell people these things, they never listen. Because most people think men of God know nothing about finances. And people run around looking for all kinds of, give me money, let me do this. And God says, one thing is needful. Settle down first. Apostle, what do you think I can do to prosper? Sit down. No, I, my, blood, my blood is hot. Calm down. And one, the breath of the spirit will just light that bulb and you stand up circumspectly and with little effort, the Lord will create a wonder out of your life. Hear what I'm saying. Write the challenges. Let me give you an assignment. Go and write out all the challenges that you are trusting God for and sit with a clean sheet of paper in your Bible and worship and just keep looking at them. Let me teach you this in conclusion. Can I, can I, am I free to teach you? Look at me. <laughs> Pray in tongues for one minute. Pray in tongues for one minute. Labaka sude bilahasiya na kataboshi. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me teach you something. Jesus was teaching and he said, The eye is the light of the body. Listen carefully. Please, please listen. The eye is the light of the body. Do you know what Jesus was saying? I hope you know Jesus was not teaching a parable. Go and Google the parables of Jesus. You don't see that story as a parable. He was giving something, he was teaching a powerful principle that the eye, these two objects you see in front of your face, that there is a mystery. Seeing is only one of the functions and it's simply because that's all science told you. There is a system of transporting realities to and from the realm of the spirit that only your eyes. That's why God healed every blind person he saw. There was no blind person that passed Jesus that was not healed. There were other cripples that he left them, but he was violent on blindness. There is a relationship between your eyes and your destiny. Listen, Paul became blinded by the glory of God, but God had to open his spiritual eyes to be seen first before the physical one opened. Do you know why your eye closes in the night when you sleep? Light me, Lord, light my life, 
light my destiny. Brothers and sisters, there are secrets in this book. When you find it, your results are not just an issue of wish. These eyes you see, let me tell you what happens. Anything the eye makes contact with consistently, the mind, the mind, listen to me carefully. What your eyes makes contact with, it forces your mind to begin to think on that reality. Now watch this. It is not the thinking about it. It is an incubation that starts happening in the realm of the spirit. Now, the Holy Ghost knows the solution. Are we together now? You meditate, not just by closing your eyes alone, because sometimes you close the physical eyes, but you are still seeing. Are we together now? And so, that's the reason why you pray well in the night, because there are few distractions. Your eye is seeing, but you just see black and white. This color sometimes can create noise. It is an enemy to meditation. Are we together? Go and close a room and sit quietly and play worship and see what happens to you. Where you are not seeing the speaker, Nepa took light and you are using your phone to worship and you pray they don't bring light because it's doing something to you. This eye is a transmitter. The same way you have a radio wave. Watch this. Not just your ears. This eye, the creation of a radio wave is in the similitude of the way God designed men to walk. That you lift an antenna and it starts receiving. The, before you, the goal is to get that sound to your radio. Is that true? But you lift up something. That something is your eyes that when you begin to make contact with the word of god i don't mean reading it just looking open down my eyes that i may behold wondrous things what did david know so you are making contact and all of a sudden let me tell you what will happen very soon your eyes will stop seeing you are looking but you are no longer seeing your mind is what takes over have you seen that happen that you are reading something and for hours you keep reading the same line you can't move forward that's because something more superior than your reading is distracting you in that case worrying the eyes then your ears these things are gates I'm showing you notice that you have a selection of songs in your phone or whatever you never sit down particularly to hear them but after hearing them five or six times you know the next song and you can sing along if they ask you to sing it on your own now you can't sing but once they play it you can follow it and sing these are systems the eyes is a very deep and dangerous mystery yes he told the man at get beautiful look at us use your eyes i'm about to talk to you i thought you said give me your ears he said look at us steadfastly and he looked at them and he said now you are seeing what was the requirement of elijah receiving from elijah not if you can hear me if you can was he not looking at him this is your bible i'm not reading an occult book this is your bible when jesus was le was levitating to heaven the bible says they kept looking at him their eyes stayed on him until the clouds received him and something happened to them could it be that the only thing you have been doing with your eyes is to just look around that's why you don't remember the faces of blind people because you cannot see their eyes the 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 part that makes your face recognizable is your eyes
Let's pray. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light my life. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Wisdom is the principal thing. It says, therefore, get wisdom. The Bible says, doth not wisdom cry. It personifies wisdom. That wisdom is calling on people and say, please, don't attempt to live without me. When the Lord was creating the heavens and the earth, the spirit of wisdom was there. Your life cannot be created without it. The manifestation of the spirit of wisdom is what is responsible for delivering the secrets of the kingdom. Without wisdom, revelation is not even possible. The spirit of wisdom will grant you access to scriptural solutions. Brothers and sisters, you will watch mountains before you crash. And people look at you and say, what wisdom is this? There is a relationship between mighty works and wisdom. Every time you see mighty works, strange results, at the back of it is a scriptural solution. It's a mystery that was unveiled. When the spirit of wisdom comes upon you, then all other manifestations of the spirit can be made possible. Without it, you are just joking around. I saw this in my life. I craved for the spirit of wisdom. I pursued it with my life and my all. The day the spirit of wisdom came upon me, I knew. I have been studying the Bible. But brothers and sisters, when the spirit of wisdom comes, your results change immediately in a strange way. The speakings of the spirit. We need this for our families. Could this be why your ministry has been grounded? Could this be why our families never rise to certain extent? We think the thing is just about more money or more this or more that. No, please help them. We are going to spend two or three minutes crying out in the spirit and say, Lord, a baptism. I'm tired of no results in my life. I'm tired of foolish decisions in my life. Pray. Pray and let the spirit of wisdom come upon you. Never stranded of solutions. Never stranded of solutions. There is always something to do. There is some, always a way of moving forward. Pray. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. Everything that has bread, everything that has bread, everything that has bread. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I receive a baptism of the spirit of wisdom. I receive the grace to manifest supernatural solutions over every challenge of my life. Lift your voice and pray. There is an answer. There has to be an answer. There is an answer. There is an answer. I can't be stranded forever. 
there is an answer hidden in the spirit of wisdom is an answer a strange answer pray Lord there is an answer to my financial predicament there is an answer to the challenge in my life that you have not seen it and you have not received it does not mean it is not there there has to be an answer to the challenges in my family hallelujah say in the name of Jesus I receive a strategy say it in the name of Jesus I receive the strategy out of confusion out of pain out of tragedy lift your voice and begin to pray there has to be a strategy he made his ways known to Moses by the spirit of wisdom there has to be a way I cannot beg forever there is a way to the anointing there is a way to my ministry rising there is a way there is a way there has to be a way I receive I receive divine strategies illumination You move mountains, you cause walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles, there is nothing that's impossible. And I'm standing here only because you move mountains. Listen, let me give us one more prayer. By the grace of God, we are a people of prayer. Most of the churches and the body of believers within this region are a people who have received the spirit of prayer and supplication. But we lack the grace for creativity. We lack the grace for imagination. The breath of the spirit upon your mind I like you to pray and say Lord grant me the grace to meditate the grace to bet solutions from the realm of the spirit the grace to use my mind to allow the Holy Ghost breathe upon my mind are you praying God gave you a mind to bring victory to your life he gave you a mind not just to watch things happen Believe me, the solution is locked up within you. Allow the Holy Spirit to begin His work of creation. The answer will come. Pray. Baptize my mind. Baptize my mind. There is an answer locked up by the Holy Ghost. My mind can produce supernatural solutions. Hallelujah. Listen. The worst, the worst condition of a man is madness. In my opinion, the worst condition of a man is madness. Where the devil has hijacked your capacity to create. This is how companies come into being. 
this is how churches increase and expand this is how business corporations rise this is how individuals rise they can stay with the holy ghost and say there's got to be a way and they stay there and stay there until something comes from heaven and they run with it and the vision speaks in the end and their lives look miraculous there is no mystery behind it it's the sacrifice of meditation every religion every sect agrees on this one thing that meditation brings creation hallelujah lord may my mind be a channel for strategies to come from heaven lift your voice and pray may my mind be a channel you didn't give me a mind just to gossip and loiter around stop all this moving up and down and sit down sit down with the holy ghost sit down let him breathe upon your eyes let him breathe upon your ears let him breathe upon your mind and my brother my sister your life will change in a way that will surprise you it's a guarantee that i give you the hidden wisdom that the princes did not know hallelujah the bible says for as he thinketh in his heart so is he so god used that strategy and slew the lamb from the foundations of the earth so there was no problem to it manifesting because it had been a reality the plan of salvation go to come let us build a city he didn't say carry blocks he said sit down let's build a city and they gave access to demon spirits to begin to brood on their creativity they saw it happening and the bible says in chapter 11 from verse 5 that god came down they had not started building but the bible says god came down to see the city which the son of man had built it. they had finished it if you don't believe what i'm saying you will never do anything great this is it the spirit of god with the raw material of your mind not business not job stay with you finish that work with him that's why there is nobody who cannot rise your little one room with roaches around no problem use it as the place like the cave of adulam start from there it's unfortunate when you rise without knowing what you did because there is then no way you teach people he said that which we have seen that which we have heard that which our hands have handled listen you see this is what makes you confident in your results you know how they came and you know what to keep doing that's why you see ministries after 45 years still standing the people are not fools when you see great men like our father bishop Oedipo, and and um, papa uh, um, 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 Adeboe, you see all of them talk you think they are arrogant they are not fools that's why bill gates remains the wealthiest man that's why all of these people come they replace him for a moment today he gets back again and all of them keep recycling among their circle it never goes anywhere because they know they have lost their ability to allow any other thing incubate negativism is the mystery behind the wealthy getting wealthier and the poor getting wealthier poorer because all they see keeps making sure they remain there the only thing they make the contact with and here are things that keep reprogramming like you have water cycle you have nitrogen cycle you have poverty cycle you have wealth cycle where things reinforce themselves again when i started working in the anointing my eyes did not see so much results so sometimes you need to push through but because i have made contacts with the result it has created a cycle you see that so you are not trying to get the power of god to move your mind has been indoctrinated it has become a stronghold that the power of god can move 
so the holy spirit comes through your mind like neural paths will teach us in neurology that every time you think the brain can create pathways to repeat those thoughts again that's what happens to you lift your hands our time is gone but i truly truly want god to do much in your life this year he declared that is a year of signs and wonders we are starting the seven days of fasting please don't miss it every night i'm going to be bringing mystery upon mystery and we're going to be praying that these things will push our lives forcefully to dimensions you never dreamt possible i stretch my hands towards you and i declare in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god may the spirit of wisdom not just the gift of wisdom the spirit the manifestation of the holy spirit that brings strategies to you i release that dimension in your life in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare inside overflow one two three those following online from tonight begin to birth creative solutions in the name of jesus by this impartation i declare that every mountain that stands before you on its encounter with the spirit of wisdom may it become a level playing ground in the name of jesus please keep standing Hallelujah. let's lift our hands to the lord and say lord we glorify you thank you because you are alive you are not dead blessed be the name of the lord lift your hands and give him praise Say, Lord, we thank you because you are alive. We celebrate you. Thank you for paying the price. Thank you for becoming sin. Thank you for the power of your blood. Hallelujah. Many of us do not realize the power of the sacrifice of Jesus. You know, while the worship... Uh, team was leading us while they were leading us in worship i was just meditating on the power and the victory that jesus brought for us hallelujah i trust that at the end of tonight's meeting god will grant us a revelation of what really happened that not only will we rejoice but we will know why hallelujah it's very very important i i've been meditating on the power of easter the word of god says it says better is the end of a man's life better is the end we celebrate christmas we rejoice so much we eat chicken we eat turkey and all of this but when it comes to easter many people feel it's just one of those religious things but do you know the power that comes today many many years and centuries ago Christ, the King, became seen on the cross. Now, I know we can feel evangelistic about it, but I pray that God will open our eyes tonight. That you see that this is not just an issue of evangelism. This is what Jesus did for us. Hallelujah. Lift your hands in one minute and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for what you did on the cross. This is the basis of the sick being healed. This is the basis for miracles, prosperity, the grace of God, inside and outside. Just lift your hands and let's worship Him truly. Lord, we thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. of your love feel wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear feel the rain of your love feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear you feel the wind of your love and the wind of your spirit now the heart beats 
of heaven, let us be, so let it rain, let it rain, open the mud face of heaven, let it rain.
power of your love, the power of your blood, revelation, revelation. Revelation chapter 12. Thank you, Jesus, because you are not dead. You died, but today you are alive. And there was war in heaven, verse 7. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon forth with his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world. He was cast out of the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation, healing, prosperity, greatness, wisdom, power, victory. Say, so Now is come soteria and strength and the kingdom of our God and of the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren there is a name that he is called for the accuser of our brethren is cast down who accused them before God day and night for the accuser of the brethren the one who takes petitions before the father and says remember you are the God of justice and you never violate your justice. The Bible calls him the accuser. He found a ministry for himself against the saints. And every time he will stand in the heavens. The Bible makes us to understand that when the sons of God gathered. Satan was in the midst of them. And in the book of Job chapter 1 he said. Have you considered my servant Job? And the accuser sat and looked and said god truly i have gone through and through the whole earth and i have seen him but you have not protected him for nothing have you not built an edge of protection around him have you not blessed the works of his hands bible calls him the accuser of the brethren that is the singular ministry of satan that has hindered the saints from coming into the place of power and grace and victory he is called the accuser of the brethren because God is a just God in fact the Bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne he will not compromise justice so every time believers want to make progress he took the ancients of old before God and petitioned God petitioned them in the days of Noah and they were judged with the flood because God had to be judged the Bible says John in the island of Patmos he said I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and he saw the things that were the things that are and the things that will be and part of the things that he saw was that there was war in heaven the Bible starts by telling us that there was a wonder in heaven a great woman standing who was about to give birth to a man child and there was a dragon that stood waiting for the child to come so that he would consume the child the bible makes us to understand that the woman was taken to a place and she delivered that child safely there was war in heaven i hope you realize that this event happened before genesis chapter 1 That's how the flood in Genesis 1 verse 2 came about. Are you following me now? John was seeing by revelation that this is what happened that brought Satan to the earth. 
thank you Lord Jesus we thank you for the power of your blood and the power of your word God bless you please be seated hallelujah I want to welcome everyone Matthew Matthew chapter 14 chapter 26 sorry verse 14 then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went unto the chief priest and said unto him what will ye give me and I will deliver him unto you and they bargained with him for 30 pieces of silver and from that time he sought an opportunity to betray him hallelujah verse 26 and as they were eating Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said take eat this is my body and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink ye all of it for this is my blood of the new testament which is shared for many for the remission of sins but i say unto you i will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the day when i drink it new with you in my father's kingdom now look up please hallelujah now in john chapter 6 jesus began to make an interesting statement and he began to describe himself as the bread of life he called himself the bread he began to remind the nation of israel of their fathers who ate manna in the desert and he began to say that he was that bread of life then he made an interesting statement he said except ye eat my flesh and drink my blood you have no part in me john 6. that's a very dangerous mystery jesus was bringing Are you there? John 6 verse 53 Then Jesus said unto them Verily, verily, I say unto you Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood ye have no part ye have no life in you He who eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life and I will raise him up on the last day for my flesh is food indeed and my blood is drink indeed he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and i in him hallelujah now you must understand that all through scripture from genesis chapter 3 until the coming of jesus christ the whole story has been about the restoration of the life of god back to man hallelujah praise god the bible makes us to understand that in the garden of eden man fell how by falling to the deceit of satan and as a result he lost righteousness he lost the holy spirit who was and is the breath of life and the bible makes us to understand that there was a breach in love and communication and communion hallelujah now i hope you realize that god made man in his image and in his likeness so man was a partaker of the nature of God through the ministry of the Holy Spirit I follow me now now man came by default having the exact righteousness of the world the one we would later call Jesus Christ hallelujah 
he had the exact same righteousness and according to the order and the design of god anyone who will ever have the holy spirit must have righteousness equal to that of jesus i follow me now righteousness is the ability to stand before the father without a sense of guilt without a sense of condemnation without a sense of sin adam did not know anything like sin he did not have that nature hallelujah and now we read how that satan came and by deceit caused him to doubt god's word and act upon his doubt by eating of the tree and man fell and from genesis chapter 3 every other thing that happened the lord the prophets moses isaiah jeremiah was the restoration of the kingdom that man lost of the righteousness that he lost of the holy spirit that he lost now according to god's eternal justice the bible says the soul that sins it shall die ezekiel chapter 18 the soul that sins it shall die and so in the days of noah when men sinned god had to judge them and he judged them with the flood hallelujah and then men sin again i hope you realize that no man could have that nature of righteousness hallelujah even noah the bible says how that after the flood noah came every wicked person had died from the earth only noah his wife three sons and their wives eight beginning new life on the earth and the bible tells us few verses later that noah brewed wine and drank it and was drunk i always ask the question who brewed the wine for him because all the wicked people were dead they had been washed in the flood that tells you the sin nature was still inherent in man are you following me now so every time god spoke about righteousness from the law he only meant righteousness based on attempting to keep the ordinances of the law not righteousness from the standpoint of jesus christ and there was a great tragedy upon man because on legal grounds listen to me on legal grounds man gave the kingdom the victory the authority unto satan and now we could not approach the father again and so god had to begin to anoint people the levitical priesthood the ironic priesthood who would mediate between god and the people hallelujah because the people did not possess that quality of righteousness to approach god directly by themselves and then they had an event called the day of atonement when the entire nation of israel would come there had to be a way for man to become part of god hallelujah and the interesting thing is that the way god designed for man to partake of everything that he carries is by eating his flesh and taking his blood follow me genesis chapter 14. genesis 14. verse 17 and the king of sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of um whatever the name is and the and of the kings that were with him at the valley of shavet which is the king's dale and melchizedek the word melchizedek means king of righteousness hallelujah and the king of righteousness the king of a city now the then jerusalem salem brought forth what brought forth what melchizedek the king of righteousness the bible says he brought forth bread and wine why bread and wine and he offered it unto abraham and after abraham had taken of it he said blessed be abraham son of the most high possessor of the heavens and the earth and in return abraham gave him a tenth of the portion we see melchizedek because the bible tells us that the priesthood of jesus christ is after the order of melchizedek and now melchizedek offered bread and wine what was he doing to abraham by offering bread and wine hallelujah and when abraham took of that bread and wine melchizedek said 
on account of your participating in this bread and wine i melchizedek standing in the prophetic office of the one who would be the christ i am the king of righteousness it is within my power to declare you righteous and on grounds of that i melchizedek say that you are blessed he said what is that blessing because he told abraham in thee all the families of the earth will partake of this blessing that you have received what is that blessing the bible tells us that that blessing was the gospel that was preached to abraham it's in your bible he said the gospel was preached to abraham question by who who preached the gospel to abraham hallelujah now the bible makes us to understand how that jesus came and began to link what happened and was telling them he said people there is a mystery of my blood and my body he said in the realm of the spirit for you to ever be part of me you must take of my flesh and you must take of my blood and he broke the bread and took of the cup and gave them they did not understand because they were spiritually dead people watch this there had to be a way and a spiritual mechanism for everyone to come into covenant with christ so that he could pay the price for mankind are you following me now because if there was no way of coming into this covenant then every man would have to die for his sins according to the justice of god without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins is that correct so if all of us if god were to be just then that means none of us can be born again except we die for our sins is that correct and now god had a plan and they said this is the plan instead of destroying the whole earth let us come up with a spiritual principle where every man will come into one man i follow me now so that whatever that man does he's doing it on behalf of the entire race now this is what was agreed in heaven and satan had no idea are you following me now and so when jesus came he began to seek to enact that spiritual covenant that will give him license to die for the whole world and we call it the last supper jesus went at table with them and he told them eat this is my body broken for you they did not understand they were eating of the bread and he said this is my cup the new testament and when they drank it spiritually listen to me spiritually the moment they took of the bread and took of the cup immediately the entire mankind came into christ that's why are you following me now immediately that's why right after the last supper he went straight to gethsemane to do what paul tells us by revelation how that jesus the one who knew no sin became sin can i tell you what he went to do in gethsemane he went to gethsemane to pray and then it was going to be the exit of the holy spirit from him because the sinful man had now come and become part of him i follow me now and the holy spirit is first called holy before spirit he was going to become the second adam this is what we call the exchange or the, the basis of the substitutionary work of christ it starts from the holy communion what is the significance of the holy communion number one it declares not just that christ um, died and all of that uh -uh. it starts by saying the word communion means koinonia common union are you following me now it comes from two words common union that means you have spiritually allowed yourself to unite with another entity so that when you are seen in the realm of the spirit you are one are you following me now and so by the communion man came into oneness that's why the bible says in first peter chapter 1 verse 9 it says that we participated in the sufferings of christ how many of you were on the cross i mean in literal sense none of us we were not even born yet paul can dare to say i have been crucified with christ was paul lying 
when did all of that drama start in the communion so every time the communion is the first revelation of our oneness it provided the basis for us to come into christ but did we we did not come into the living and the resurrected christ we first came into christ and became the second adam with him i follow me now so that the legal claims of justice because he that oh god had no basis of blessing people because the accuser remember we started from revelation chapter 12 the accuser would always stand and say god you are holy you are great these men are sinful they are stiff-necked people and they rebel against you and if you bless them in their sins then truly you are not god are you following me now and so man comes in union with jesus christ now it's important to realize that everything christ did for you you accomplished it also in him i follow me now it's not enough to know that christ died for you you must know that you died in him the victory of a believer in this kingdom life is tied to the revelation of our oneness and our partnership i follow me now our life and our victory is rooted in christ you see paul saying in christ with christ in christ with christ the authority over demons is in christ it's on account of your partnership with christ the basis of your victory in the kingdom is on account of what christ has done and what he brought you by covenants to do in him hallelujah and so when they took jesus to pilate and caesar and all of the people and they began to question him in christ we were participating are you listening to me it was being credited to us that we were paying the price of the justice the righteousness the victory that will come we were paying it in the person of christ this is the revelation a lot of believers are finding it very difficult to have that they are in christ when jesus was beaten the scripture that jack first shared isaiah seeing this years before it happened he said who had believed our reports and to whom has the arm of the lord been revealed and then he began to give us a description of the passion of the christ how that he was beaten and disfigured beyond recognition hallelujah now you must understand what happened that everything jesus suffered first he suffered for you second you suffered it in him are you listening to me because without the accuser of the brethren listen to me listen to me without the accuser of the brethren there is no sickness there is no poverty there is no failure are you listening to me the bridge between the believer and the manifestation of what jesus died for is the ministry of the accuser of the brethren and so we are studying from scripture how the accuser was silenced experientially because there are many of us that satan although satan has been defeated the voice of accusation keeps rising hallelujah against god's people and many of us have not been able to enjoy the blessings of easter of the death and the resurrection of jesus christ let me tell you when you catch the revelation of the fact that in christ you are free from the accusations of satan the accusations of your past all kinds of accusations that limit us hallelujah when they put a crown of thorn upon the head of jesus do you realize that they put a crown of thorn upon your head in christ you were paying the price for your victory and your authority because only kings wear crowns everything that was happening from gethsemane to the throne was for you are you listening to me and that was done in christ so when they were beating jesus christ you were being beaten in him i follow me now paying the legal claims to guarantee your divine health 
they accused Jesus Christ before Pilate that was in exchange so that no one will be able to accuse you again the Bible says who shall bring any accusation against God's elect hallelujah and when they led him carrying a cross I hope you do you know why he was nailed upon a tree hallelujah two reasons number one it was a Jewish way of killing people number two do you realize that it was because of the tree that man fell in the beginning it was the union of man he identified with the tree the forbidden fruit and now Jesus had to take the curse that came from that tree because the Bible says in Galatians chapter 3 it says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law be made a cause for us for it is written in the mosaic law cost is any man that hangs upon the tree hallelujah he said that the blessings of abraham i told us what that blessing is that blessing is not what we call the blessing hallelujah the blessings of abraham is not the same as the blessing the blessings of abraham is justification by faith hallelujah that's what abraham got he was first justified by faith the bible says abraham believed god and it was counted unto him for righteousness so like faithful abraham if we believe god that righteousness is imputed on account of that righteousness we now qualify for the blessing and that the blessing is not just cars and houses the the one we call the blessing right now is not just a prophetic pronouncement to prosper is the presence of the holy spirit he is the blessing hallelujah psalms 133 says behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity it says it's like the oil that comes upon the head of aaron moving down even to his skirts and to his garment he said for there where believers are gathered he has commanded the blessing now the bible says where two or three are gathered in my name there i am in their midst in the person of the holy spirit he is the blessing do you realize that all of the sufferings of christ was to ultimately get the holy spirit back in us i've said it again and again eternal life is the presence of the holy spirit in a man eternal life is not just one box that the holy spirit brings and drops it inside you and say now you have eternal life what is the concept of eternal life eternal life is the life of god alive living in oneness in union with the human spirit eternal life is not the life you have when you are when you get out of this realm the real translation is not eternal life is god's life because everybody has eternal life i hope you know that sinners everybody when the evangelists preach they say where will you spend eternity not will you spend it you are certainly going to spend it the question is the location hallelujah you are certainly going to spend eternity there are people who have been in hell hallelujah and for your information i hope you know that hell and the lake of fire are not the same hallelujah hell is a temporary place of torment hell is both a location and a spirit hell is found at the lower parts of the earth the bible makes us understand that when jesus died he descended to the lower parts of the earth the lake of fire is part of the kingdom of god god himself designed it for the punishment of satan are you listening to me so there is nobody in the lake of fire right now it's in your bible hallelujah after the judgment satan death hell the grave they will all be relocated to the lake of fire so those who are in hell the punishment has really not started the punishment starts officially when satan begins to join them in the punishment so are you interested in jesus christ <laughs> i'm not saying do you want him are you really interested it's not compulsory hallelujah 
for death is a spirit hell is a spirit the grave is a spirit that's why a question was asked he said oh death where is thy victory oh grave where is thy sting it, it, it personifies all of these things isn't it interesting that when the bible is talking about these things we call phenomenons it gives them uh, english we call it personification isn't it it says there was a fourth man riding upon the pale horse holding a pair of balances and the bible says his name is death it's a spirit that's why when the church is raptured listen when the church is raptured death will the bible says men will run and look for that spirit called death and the death itself will run away read it he said let the mountains fall on us death find a way to get us out of this place let me give you a little good old time religion message for many of you who have not had it in a long time there is something called the judgment say after me the judgment let me tell you the implication because the bible says when the holy spirit comes he will convict you of sin of righteousness and of judgment we have tactically removed the ministry of the judgment and left only sin and righteousness because we are trying to tell people come to christ you get a car you get a victorious life wonderful how about the rest you must finish it the bible tells us and people we have all kinds of new age theories coming up all kinds of spiritual jargons teaching that there is no word mentioned rapture in the bible that's very true there is also no word called trinity in the bible but we believe in the trinity is that correct the very the bible says an elohim said the word elohim is plural in the hebrew the singular is eloha hallelujah the bible says when jesus came out of the water the holy ghost came upon him that's the third person of the trinity jesus the son standing the father declares from heaven this is my beloved son and so we see three distinct personalities proof number two because scripture must compare scripture and by the mouth of two or three witnesses is a matter established we see stephen when he was about to be martyred the bible says stephen was full of the holy ghost he looks up to heaven and sees the father sitting and jesus standing at his right hand hallelujah and now what of the doctrine of the rapture is it true that one day there will be a sudden disappearance of people i was studying a documentary about aliens that have begun to come upon the earth and um, they put a genetic implant in people that can cause them to live 500 years sick free disease free hallelujah and now many people do not believe that one day we are going to get out of this earth I hope you know that we are going home question where is home where is home don't feel bad your answer is correct heaven hallelujah but the question is heaven is not home because it's above the earth heaven is home because that's where God is because we realize that heaven is still going to come down in in what the bible calls the new jerusalem hallelujah heaven will come down again heaven is wherever jesus is anyway let's continue and so jesus hangs on that cross becoming the curse and now hold on do you know that when man fell the father turned his face away from him is that correct now when jesus came into partnership with man what happened the father now turned his face away from jesus the exact same way he would turn his face from every sinner and on the cross jesus cried and said eloi eloi lamak tabak sanai father why have you forsaken me and the answer is obvious i have forsaken you because on that cross you are no longer jesus the christ on that cross you are seen the sinner are you listening to me jesus became every prostitute every drunkard every thief are you listening to me every arm robber on that cross paul saw this by revelation and he saw that jesus had become the second adam and then he died 
Jesus died, he gave up the ghost, the Bible says. Which ghost? His human spirit, not the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit had left Jesus since Gethsemane. Are you listening to me? That was the only reason why the people could take him and beat him up. And blood came out. Blood is a sign of mortality. It's a sign that you are subject to death. Hallelujah. For do you realize that when God created man from the beginning, there was no blood. It was not a life that depended on blood. Hmm. Bible says we are members of his flesh, his body, and his bones. He didn't mention blood. Because when Jesus resurrected, he poured his blood in the heavenly tabernacle, yet he was still alive. And he stepped in and said, all hail. He said, let me prove to you, there is a big hole on my hand. There is another one on my side. And it pierced right to my heart, according to medicine. A man gets up with a hole in his heart. A big hole by his side. Holes in his hand and feet. That's enough passage for blood to empty itself out of him. And yet he's alive. It is a quickly give me five pounds of blood. Let me sustain myself. He laughed. He didn't need to open the door. He just walked in. He said, all hail. When you understand this, you will know the kind of life that he gave us. Are you following me now? I know that every time we talk about the supernatural life, many people just say, don't bore us with all this supernatural thing. Do you realize that the life that Jesus gave you was not just the life he walked with on the earth? It's the victorious life. Because on earth, he had not conquered death. Are you listening to me when he conquered death he said i am giving you this life you are better than adam you are not adam adam was a quickening soul a living soul but in christ we are life-giving spirits see adam was powerful but he had no ability to give life to another man now in christ we have the ability that's why we can heal the sick that's why we can raise the dead. Adam did not have that ability. So he was only a living soul. I follow me now. But right now we are life giving spirits. We not only have life. We have something called dunamis. The ability to transfer that life to another person. That's why you can tell someone on a wheelchair. Stand up in the name of Jesus. That's why you can prophesy and release life upon someone. Are you seeing the difference between the new creation and Adam? Adam was only a quickening soul. There was no need for healing and all of this. He did not possess that ability. The Holy Spirit was not living in Adam as a, uh, as a, on, on account of redemption and all of this. The Holy Spirit was only living in Adam as a sustainer and the spirit of creativity. That was the only dimension of him that Adam knew. But now we understand that the righteousness that we receive is imputed into us by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And so Adam was a living soul. And in Christ we are life-giving spirits. Not only do we have the life of God, we have the ability to transmit that life. That's the reason why you can call someone who is a drunkard and his encounter with you, the life of God can flow through you to him. Hallelujah. That's why you can lay hands on someone and the power of God can flow through you to the person it is scriptural proof that you are a life-giving spirit hallelujah are you listening to me very powerful and now let's let's look at the drama that happened in hell now jesus goes to hell because when sinners die they go to hell is that correct so jesus died a sinner where would he go to he cannot have gone to heaven I follow me now very very important now he went to hell when he went to hell satan was already there having a wonderful party there was a celebration in heaven in hell why because jesus had died and satan said finally the one last hope the seed of the woman that was to bruise my head has now been defeated i follow me now so i can imagine all the demons saying hail satan truly you are god and while that ceremony 
was in hell it was brutally interrupted by the presence of jesus christ hold on jesus went to hell without the assistance of the holy spirit i follow me now he went to hell in the perfection of a man when he stepped into hell all the principalities and powers saw him and he was walking right straight to satan there's no time out i've shown you that drama in the bible and the bible says how that all the principalities and powers they said since you will not bow in the temptation you must bow now by force what is it about bowing you see when you bow to someone in the realm of the spirit how many of you do you know that the military life is a type of the realm of the spirit are you following me now you never salute a man in the military until you are higher than the man is that correct when a general is about to make another general he salutes to him and he resigns are you following me now and so order and hierarchy is powerful in the realm of the spirit now we see this happen because satan wanted jesus christ who is the image of the father to bow to him so that he will say father i have achieved what i tried to achieve in the book of revelations i am truly now king of kings if your son who represents you bows to me then it means i am greater than him are you following me now and so when all the demons were in hell satan told them he will bow by force and the bible says they were upon jesus christ fighting and struggling to cause him to bow to satan and according to the revelation that was given isaiah he said he shall see the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied let me explain that mystery to you please two people come any two people one stand here and one stand here Cletus, you stand here now let's assume Cletus stole the property of Reuben are you listening to me do you realize that or God forbid let's assume he came to your house and killed your child do you know you your satisfaction is when you see him being punished it's not that you're a bad person <laughs> are you following me now why do they punish criminals to appease the ones that they offended are you following me now so when we sentence this person to 30 years imprisonment at least it's hard to calm down are you following me now isaiah said because man offended god there must be one who must be punished to appease his heart he said he shall see the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied and that was what was happening when the demons were upon jesus christ they were upon us in him and while we we're paying that price when the heart of the father was appeased the bible says that he made a public show suddenly when the legal claims of justice had been satisfied jesus made a public show of them the bible says he triumphed over all the demons in hell put together do you realize that power how many of them oppress you the bible says all of them came together in unison they said we need to cooperate to get this done and in their greatest strength they were defeated and then jesus went to satan himself see how powerless satan is and jesus said now give me the keys no argument now hold on do you realize that there needed to be a legal basis to collect the keys because when satan was tempting jesus christ he was using the dominion that was given to man he said jesus bow to me and i will give you these kingdoms can you imagine satan mocking jesus and jesus never said you're a liar because it is true the keys were with him he collected it from man jesus only laughed and said i'm coming on legal grounds are you following me now now he went to satan and said who were you talking to some years ago let me have the keys hallelujah now the beautiful part is not that he collected the keys because we were in him i've said it again and again all of us said give me my own keys you have oppressed me let me receive it for my family i receive it for my destiny i don't care where i'm coming from i know the jew people in my village but give me the keys i have been called out of every tribe this is what happened on easter this is what happened in hell are you following me now revelation chapter one 
He said, I am he that was dead, but now is alive and I hold the keys. And Jesus said, I will give you the keys. Keys represent access. So the earth, listen, the earth does not belong to Satan. He only owns the system that governs this earth. Satan does not own the world in terms of its structure. Are you listening to me? He only earns, he only um, has a mindset. Are you listening to me? An ideology. That's why I keep telling people, the gospel is not just a message. The gospel is a mindset. It's a value system. Are you listening to me? It's a value system that seeks to enthrone Christ as king and enthrone his government here on the earth. If your message of salvation is only a message that gets you saved, you will not be effective. Are you listening to me? The gospel of salvation is, he said, go into all the world, cosmos, and preach, declare, impart, give them this mindset that makes Jesus king of kings. So everywhere you are, you have a mindset that seeks to enthrone him and give him praise. Are you listening to me? And when Jesus died, he defeated Satan. And after he defeating Satan, he was about to get out of what we know to be Hades, the place of the dead. Hallelujah. Because the Bible lets us know that when Jesus resurrected, he resurrected with a number of other saints who were dead but could not be in heaven at that time because they were not dead in Christ. No man comes through the Father except by me. Are you following me now? And when Jesus resurrected, the Bible makes us to understand that he stepped out of hell on his way coming back to heaven i mean coming back to the earth there was a little drama that played itself again suddenly he was coming out and according to psalms 24 a revelation was given to the psalmist he said lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted O ye ancient doors that the king of glory may come in coming from where these were passageways that interfaced the, the earth and the realm these were doorways they were portals to the place of the dead and the gates because the gates were not just non-living things in the realm of the spirit look up let me give you a shocker in the realm of the spirit everything is alive everything is alive are you following me now that's where all of the people that get all these things and act films you see all of these films they act that a dog can talk your car can talk your shoe can talk they got it by divination and sorcery they were able to open up themselves to see from the realm of the spirit in the realm of the spirit you will see the tunes that are coming from this keyboard they are singing praises to god and they are alive they are not dead are you listening to me that's the reason why you can be crying right now and they play a song suddenly you feel happy what happened what happened there was an activity in the realm of the spirit you didn't just hear music that's why for all the fans of rihanna and the rest that's exactly what happens when you sit under her anointing and you receive all of the demonic impartations I say it doesn't matter Say, I don't listen to it. Rihanna. There's this cool guy, doesn't offend, doesn't do anything nude. It's just nice. Every time I, I want to sleep or I just want to meditate, I sit down. Yanni and all of the people. And we like them so much. Now, let me tell you something. Even if they write a song called Jesus, Jesus, you are truly the King of Kings, you will receive impartations of demons from their songs because when you listen to a man your mindset is not just change you receive the spirit that brought motivated whatever the person is doing hallelujah and jesus rose again he said who is this king of glory and then there was an answer from heaven the lord 
strong and mighty why did he give him the attribute of a warrior because he just defeated satan he said the lord the one who is strong the one who is mighty say lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted O ye ancient doors he said who is this king of glory he said the lord of hosts is his name and suddenly on the third day jesus christ resurrected the same spirits that left him in gethsemane came and breathed upon that body and the living christ listen the way they embalm people gens 107 students you remember even if you are not dead if they embalm you that way you must die hallelujah it's not like our days that you can pretend if you see armed robbers and just say you are the way they embalm you be sure you are going to die so how did jesus christ remove all of those things that's why paul said that you will comprehend the power that was released to bring him back to life the same thing happened to lazarus when lazarus was tied hand and leg jesus called him out without walking lazarus came out his legs were bound because he said lose him and let him go so how did he walk from his grave to come out to the front of the tomb the same power of god's word brought him out hallelujah praise the lord i needed to comprehend the power of easter and now jesus rises from the dead and then the bible says watch this he arranged the clothes that they used to wrap him is in your bible he arranged it but i find something interesting from bible history we find out that he only arranged the one that they used to wrap his head he did not arrange the one they used to wrap his body and paul understanding by the spirit says we do not see all things under his feet the feet of the church he said but we see jesus jesus has completed his work follow me now jesus is alive standing and mary sees him wanting to touch him says rabboni say no do not touch me for i have not yet ascended to my father what was he going to heaven to do the book of hebrews for there to be atonement there must be what blood without blood there is no atonement are you listening to me now jesus drained his blood follow me please he drained his blood just like the high priest would drain the blood of the lamb and he took it to the heavenly tabernacle because the tabernacle that was built in the old was a prototype according to hebrews of that was which was in the new and jesus entered the heavenly tabernacle and blood and poured that blood upon the mercy seat are you listening to me when he poured that blood upon the mercy seat now he said man on legal grounds when you receive me the father can now look at you because eternally he will only see you through the blood and anything seen through the blood is holy anything are you listening to me the presence of god and his blood makes everything holy moses is standing on a dusty ground and god says remove your shoe for where you stand is holy what makes it holy who swept it that's the same way that blood and that presence comes upon a bad sinner and god says you are holy say god don't kid me god says well you can choose to believe it or not but as far as i see i see you standing having the exact righteousness of jesus you say lord i just took one bottle of beer before becoming a christian while they were preaching i was busy drinking beer god says well that's your way of seeing it i'm telling you the present reality from the perspective of heaven not guilty i wrote a book about it some years not guilty listen not guilty does not mean this is the power of redemption when you go to the court and you do something wrong what do they say guilty but pardoned isn't it so guilty means you actually committed the offense are you listening to me you actually committed the offense but someone pays the price 
now jesus looks at us and says you are not guilty not guilty means you did not commit the offense how about god how about god I didn't steal you didn't cheat in your exam hall see this is why the faith life is very difficult for many people to comprehend God says not guilty so who committed the offense whoever was on the cross ah whoever was on the cross God looks at you this is why Paul said behold what manner of love let me prove it to you abraham the bible says abraham did not waver at the promises of god but have you not read your bible let's be honest with ourselves that abraham was doubting and in fear to a point that his wife said Tor, since i cannot give you a child here is my maid called hagar why did abraham say no way god has spoken i am convinced his word is true abraham said thank you i've been thinking about it i i just didn't want to offend you are you following me now hagar got pregnant and gave birth to ishmael go to the book of romans chapter 4 and read the interesting thing that god has to say about abraham look up god said this abraham wavered not at his faith through unbelief ha ah. he said sarah considered not the deadness of her womb didn't sarah laugh when you understand the power of redemption the accuser will seize his hold over your life jesus entered the temple and saw people um doing all kinds of things business selling animals he would have kindly politely as a gentle savior reported them to the high priest Caiaphas. jesus went and said i'm coming he rolled a whip and carried it the bible says he overturned their table is that no wickedness and flogged all of them and the bible says jesus never sinned the bible says that we have a high we do not have a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity he said he was tempted in every way like us yet without sin if god can look at abraham and roland buck many of you go and read it angels on assignment the account of roland buck when he went to heaven the files of Abraham was open unto him. When it was open, he saw all the places where Abraham was greeting people. And they were. it was recorded in heaven. He never saw where Abraham slept with Hagar. He told the angel, he said, there's a mistake here. Go and read it. It's in the book. Roland Bucky has gone to be with the Lord in glory. He said, Lord, what is this? And God said, only the righteous things are recorded here. listen if the sin problem is not solved then jesus really lied by telling us he died are you listening to me if the sin problem is not tackled many of us when the accuser comes listen without a past there is no accusation you only accuse people with their past you cannot accuse a man with his future are you following me now let me give you a revelation in this place the only basis of accusation is that you have a past the bible says therefore if any man is in christ that man is a new creation he said all things the basis from which the accuser of the brethren can get the basis to accuse you all things your drunkenness your smoking your sleeping around your occultism have been washed he said you have become new this is present tense reality from God's perspective the Bible says there is therefore now now there was in the morning there was yesterday there was day before yesterday when you wrote your last exam there was 
He said, now, 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 now. I don't care even if you slept with someone before coming. There is therefore, now, no condemnation. He didn't say to every Christian, to them which are in Christ. So every time Satan comes and says, Cletus, when you were 14 years, remember your mother's pot. Now you want to be great. I want you to know you are a failure. Ask him two questions. Question one, where is your birth certificate? Because you are not even qualified to be around the earth. Only those who have bodies can function in the earth. Satan is an illegal occupant upon the earth. Even Jesus, when he needed to come to the earth, he had to wear a body. Satan, where is your body? The next time a demon hangs around your ceiling and is disturbing, tell him, calm down. If you can show me a body, we can talk. Oh, for they do not have physical bodies. That's why they need human agents. When Jesus was going to cast them out of the man with gathering, they said, don't kill us. We no longer can function. We have been in this territory. They look for the closest animal. According to Animal Farm, after man, he speaks. And they said, drive them to pigs. Your father, when he got a job, your father was the director of this and that and he squandered some money none of you none of you it will not go well with you and listen listen i have a serious problem with people that go into people's past they say start telling me everything that happened from when you were two years old you say i slept somebody say i'm writing Just keep talking listen hold on except jesus lied or we don't know what we are believing are you listening to me the bible says if any man be in christ it is a gift can you just accept it by faith that lord not only have you died but my past has been washed so that every time you are moving and you see anybody that reminds you of your past the faith of god rises up within you and you say ah, you are looking at the wrong person we stole together when we were in primary school, yes. But I am the righteousness of God in Christ. It's not on account of what I have done. Without a past, there is no accusation. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that the accuser of the brethren, the one who goes to your yesterday and peeps all the things that you did against God and picks them up as testimonies and goes before God. Every time, watch this, every time, God wants to bless Reuben. The accuser intercepts and said, Lord, to bless him with all this, with all this, and watch what happened. In that great contest, his accusation was replaced by the blood. So every time God looks, he sees through the blood. Every time I stand to minister to the sick, I never try to minister out of my own perfection because sometimes I just shouted at somebody before coming for the meeting. So why are you allowing the people to stand up? But then I come in the perfection and the righteousness of the son of the living God. And when you speak to those demons, the demons do not see Joshua Selman because if it's me, they are seeing, they'll do to me what they did to the sons of Sceva. Every time the demons see only you, you will know by their response are you following me now but when they look at you in the realm of the spirit they see you standing with the very righteousness of the son of god zechariah zechariah if we don't get this our purpose of celebrating easter is useless zechariah then we'll pray tonight is a communion service many of you are used to taking communion without revelation but i pray that god will grant you grace 
let me show you an interesting story that depicts our salvation i like the name that was used may god bless zechariah may god bless the holy spirit zechariah chapter 3 why was your name not there so i can literally just pick up my bible and say sit and read help me and read let's read on and he showed me joshua what did he call him what did he call him take note of that let's read on standing before the angel of the lord and satan standing at his right hand this is a prophetic picture of what satan attempts to do every time in the realm of the spirit over your life let's read on standing at his right hand to do what to do what verse 2 and the lord said unto satan the lord rebuked thee O satan even the lord who has chosen jerusalem rebuked thee is this not a branch plucked out of fire read on now joshua was clotted with what look up what did the bible call him in verse one he said joshua the high priest now the bible tells us that joshua was clotted with what and stood before the angel verse four and he answered and spoke unto those who stood before him saying what take away what the filthy garment from him and unto him he said behold i have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee and i will clothe thee with a change of raiment verse 5 and i said let them set a clean turban upon his head so they set a clean turban upon his head and clothed him with garments and the angel of the lord stood by look up this was a prophetic picture of what was happening in the realm of the spirit the although joshua had been called to be the high priest by himself do you realize that in all of this story joshua was silent are you following me now that means we did not contribute anything to our redemption nothing nothing at all there are many believers now i'm going to soon bring a strong balance there are many believers who are trying to be holy they are trying to be sinless they are trying to be everything they wake up this morning and say lord throughout this day i can't remember accusing anybody i didn't look for anybody's trouble by the way my roommates are not even around they traveled so lord on account of my holiness today let my prayers be answered there are so many people that are being taught that and they do not realize that you come to his throne of grace not on account of what you have done but on account of what christ has done for you are you getting it now very very important so redemption offers us the opportunity that our past can go away now it's difficult for your for your past to get out of your mind mentally I follow me now but you must come to a point where you realize that the lord does not judge you on those past again are you listening to me you see the reason why on the basis of this god can release the power of god to break you free from whatever is wrong and say from your village in our village we used to do this in our village we used to do that and on account of that they released a cause and they said everybody in our village you will never get married when you get to 25 years old you will die when you realize this you will find out that your past from the day you got born again in christ your past has been done away with let me ask you a question do you believe this because if you do not believe it then you are not a believer stop calling yourself a believer a believer is one who believes something what do you believe hallelujah now but here is the balance when you truly understand what righteousness is you will think it's a license to sin is that correct 
If I don't balance this, I will not help you. Because many of us really rejoiced. But if you go with that half revelation, you will go to hellfire. Despite all of the things I have preached. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Now, Paul said, Shall we continue in sin that grace will abound? So now that I know that I am seen through the blood, can I keep sleeping around as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? Lying around as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? Looting around in Christ? Cheating in Christ? Doing all of these things in Christ? Bribing in Christ? All I need to know. And listen friends, I'm helping us tonight because there are all kinds of teachings. There are teachings that teach that when you sin, it's your body that sins, not your spirit. And your body is going to die and remain here. There are real people in hellfire. Some of them left this morning. They are there. Are you listening to me? Be careful. What God does is he grants you grace. Listen. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of all, uh, you know, iniquity and all of that and all of that. Now, what that means is this. Listen to me. It is not a basis for you to get up and go and begin to mess around. There is a difference between transgression and iniquity. I'm helping us solve the sin problem right now. Are you following me now? What is transgression? To transgress, to violate a set principle transgression we do that all the time isn't it all the time when out of annoyance you look at your roommate and call them a name that you have not mentioned for years that's not iniquity that's transgression no man hear me is in hell because of transgression every man who is in hell is because of iniquity what is iniquity iniquity is a perpetual listen willful continual state of rebellion against the principles and the order of god in spite of the convictions of the spirit and the operation of the word of god take note willful perpetual continuous if it is on the basis of transgression none of us will go to heaven look up are you listening to me paul the apostle that we respect said something in chapter 7 he said the things that i do not want to do i find myself doing them the things that i want to do i do not find myself doing them he said all oh, wretched man that i am this is paul the apostle he said who shall deliver me from this body of death are you listening to me there are many of you that because of certain maybe you were given to uh, pornography and and and, and um, um, um sleeping around either as a result of your past or the environment that you came from now you got born again and truly you love god are you following me now but here and there you find yourself drawing back now listen to me listen to me i want to i want to give you a revelation that will help you are you listening to me every time you find yourself in those situations whether stealing or you find yourself do all of these things the holy spirit because you are born again before you were born again it was not an issue i seen that you do anything and just go scot free but now the holy spirit lives in you he represents the presence of the kingdom i follow me now the convicting power of the holy spirit is upon you and you are crying you are listening to me brothers and sisters there is no forgiveness without a willingness to demonstrate repentance are you hearing me forgiveness is only effective when there is repentance a repentant and a contrite heart is that heart that is always willing to make amends to adjust are you listening to me and on grounds of that god looks at your faithfulness david killed more kings he killed more people than any king slept with Bathsheba kill uriah hear what god has to say about me david you are a man after my heart how about god what kind of person are you am i blessing someone tonight the accuser of the brethren because we are in christ 
we were with him when satan accused you he already accused you in christ and christ has triumphed over him the bible says satan was casted from heaven there is no more place for him when god casted him he took you to heavenly places now you live far above and beyond the realm of satan's accusation but when sin becomes a pleasant experience for you when it becomes a willful perpetual if i smoke for instance and right now i know that after koinonia i'm going to go and smoke it's not um, this is i hope those who are recording it i see that this is an example for you say i always knew it i always knew it hallelujah are you listening to me when your heart is made up to be rebellious you know the principles of god and willfully consciously perpetually and continually let me tell you something the mercy of god is new every morning but the mercy of god has boundaries are you listening to me see this podium like the mercy of god this is what rebellion does to you it keeps pushing you out of the boundaries of god's mercy are you listening to me a day will come you will step out outside of the mercy of god everything you find is judgment are you listening to me that's why you can be surprised to read books and find out that there are believers or somebody who claim to be a christian who is in hell and you're like what in the world is that don't you dare say it's a lie because those who went to hell are too serious to lie to you when you go to hell or heaven anyone you come back with an impression you'll be too serious to joke with people are you listening to me so here's the balance my past satan can no longer accuse me with my past because in christ the advocate speaks for me are you listening to me so i walk free i love the lord i sincerely love him with all of my heart and i desire him the bible says i write these things to you that ye sin not and if ye sin ye have an advocate with the father even jesus the righteous what has satan been accusing you of what has satan been accusing your family of it has stood as a bridge between you and the things god wants to do in your life god tells you i want to make you great suddenly you hear the accuser of the brethren he steps up and he says no lord you cannot be just tonight i bring you a message on account of the shed blood of jesus christ on the calvary one of the things that it does to you is it silences the voice of the accuser say after me in the name of jesus the accuser is silenced over my life i cannot be judged from my past because i love the lord and his blood atones for me yes believe this otherwise jesus christ wasted his time by dying on the cross if the sin issue was not solved then what exactly did he come to do are you listening to me right now what is going to be your basis of manifesting the life of holiness you first receive the nature of holiness by the presence of the holy spirit who lives in you and then you begin to manifest the acts of holiness are you listening to me so you don't try to end pornography and stealing by resolutions you write 20 i will not do it again in your book immediately you finish you find yourself violating it again he does something to you this is the mystery of the communion watch this common union you were with him in death are you listening to me he defeated death he defeated sin now what happens by the communion every time you take the communion this is what you are announcing in the realm of the spirit satan remember that i died with christ are you listening to me and now i'm alive with him and i share a common life that's the life that gives me victory over sin that's the life that gives me victory over satan are you listening to me and so an ability comes upon you suddenly you find out that you have power over pornography power over all of these things 
you find out that when that same spirit that comes to lure you there is an ability the holy spirit reminds you of your oneness in christ and suddenly you see that you have victory over sin you no longer run away you are above it are you listening to me when the guy who used to sleep around with you calls and says how far you don't just off the phone and say i'm afraid you pick the phone boldly and tell him mister there is something that has happened to me i am one with the living christ are you listening to me i i'm not just trying to shun you so that you will narrowly live my life you cannot it says sin shall no longer have dominion over you sometimes we share it and we just i say if it's not because of the revelation of god maybe i'll have children by now that can fool your luxurious hostel don't you know i'm a young man oh but there is an ability i stopped struggling when i found a scripture jude 24 now unto him who is able to keep you able to keep you i tell you without fear or favor i can say it by the grace and by the mercy of god and i can attest for my brothers we are living a life of true righteousness in christ if you are a lady here and have ever made any advance or at you or any of my brothers stand up i don't mean sleeping just to come close stand up we're in the presence of god there is an ability of christ don't say we are young people and our generation has peculiarities nonsense if you are in christ you are not only born again there is an ability in you there is an ability are you listening to me you want to come and bribe me i am one with christ i share a common union common union i love what he loves i hate what he hates not just by my will by the effectual working of his spirit in me are you listening to me you need to break the power and the struggle and the hold of sin and all of these things that keep believers down for god is faithful listen easter gives us an opportunity to stand upon sin and the works of darkness you can live a life of true holiness and righteousness in christ not by struggling but by realizing your common union with christ hear me and when there is no more death in you the accuser can no longer speak then you will now have the ability to release that life into others are you listening to me this is the blessing of easter the blood of jesus christ number one atones for our sins number two cries against the accuser every time you kill a man his blood will haunt you is that correct jesus allowed himself to be killed by satan through the roman soldiers satan did not know what he was doing forever every time we take the communion satan sees the blood the moment he sees the blood he remembers that he is a murderer just like cain remembered when he killed abel the blood of abel cried for vengeance every time we take the communion the blood cries against every sickness in your body the blood cries against every ordinance and every covenant are you listening to me the blood has a voice and it cries let me tell you what it cries mercy in other words no accusation not guilty the blood cries mercy are you listening to me this is the power of being born again so i can walk high i can walk scot free thank you jesus we are going to pray as you take this communion listen to me many dramatic things will happen to many of you are you listening to me you are taking this is not just speaking the word this is um, maybe just juice and 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 the wafers but i need you to know that this is the revelation that will make it become the literal body the bible says when we do this we take the literal body and the blood of christ what does that mean you are enacting and enforcing in the realm of the spirit that you have common union with christ say after me i am one with christ the bible says he that is joined to christ 
is one spirit he that is joined to christ one spirit victorious above sickness victorious above poverty victorious above failure when jesus rose again we were risen in him now that he's seated the bible didn't say we are standing in him we are seated a king only sits when the war is over so we function from the state of rest what we do hear me i've said this again and again what we do is not to fight satan in the literal sense of blow me one i blow you if that is your revelation repent tonight because when you are left one-on-one -on -one with satan it's not even him who will fight you are you listening to me our job as believers is not to fight satan our job as believers is through the weapon of prayer and the weapon of the word we enforce the victory that has been established for us in christ are you listening to me when we speak and we say we dethrone principalities and powers many of you just imagine yourself in the arrow now let me tell you the realm of the spirit is very funny because you can be caught up in a vision and you see everybody with a soldier i mean a soldier and a sword and you bring back that revelation and start misleading people so everybody carry your spiritual arrow and then you carry it you say stand at a tease and you do this and then now now say everybody look listen let me tell you if that is your revelation satan will help you to share arrows are you listening to me please don't get me wrong i don't speak any against any ministry i'm just trying to bring us to a point of revelation so as you take this communion don't just stand as we do those days when i was in the seminary you had to place your right hand on your left and walk sacredly in all piety and when you stood you would either stand or kneel down you, you don't pinch you don't you have a sense of decorum and when they give you you don't chew you dare not chew you put it in your mouth and take the juice with all piety and then when it sinks down you go back to your seat and bend down what even if you are not praying just bend down for a while i saw elders doing it i, I still don't know why you bend down then after five minutes you stand up then while they are giving others you just hold your bible and you do something spiritual and satan joins us at the communion table he comes with his hands the flesh profited nothing it is the spirit that gives life but when you do this with revelation instantly you will see diseases go instantly there are many of you that see people accuse you in your dreams they are only accusing you because satan will only accuse on a legal basis in the realm of the spirit everything is done legally tonight the blood speaks mercy tonight the blood speaks grace tonight the blood and the bread speaks unity there is a common union in the name of the lord jesus christ you have been called out of every tribe many of you will find out that demonic manipulations over your life will instantly cease all the people that come to you in dreams and say you want to leave us yes you are leaving them tonight because you cannot be joined to two people the bible says a wife shall leave her father and mother with the husband are you listening to me you are about to be joined to your real bridegroom are you listening to me if it is true that the church is the bride of christ that common union is enacted by the bread and by the cup rise up on your feet go ahead and begin to pray the accuser of the brethren is fallen pray in the spirit the communion is very important because jesus died satan can no longer accuse me no my past is washed in the blood there is grace for me to live the resurrected life the life of victory the life above sin the life of power the life of grace the life of glory go ahead and prophesy declare all the things that you are on account of what christ has done prophesy i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus call your name call your name 
Say, I am holy. I am righteous. In the name of Jesus. I am a new creation. There is no past. Therefore, no accusation. I am the righteousness. I can approach the Father without a sense of guilt, without a sense of fear, without a sense of condemnation. Pray. Sin cannot have dominion over my body. Pray. Challenge everything that is not of God. Bible says, bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, can we have um, some of the ministers just come and help us? This is a very spiritual moment right now. I need you to do this with revelation. Hallelujah. Okay, um, we need welfare. Where are the welfare ladies? So you can help them to hold it while they distribute it. Hallelujah. Please just pass it. Someone do it inside and outside. Everybody just hold it. Hallelujah. Okay. Yes, you can pick this. Someone else can pick this. Can you come and help Pastor Williams hold it while he serves it? His wife. Help them hold it. Please bring more. Hallelujah. Okay. Some of you stay outside. Let's have one or two ministers, please. One or two ministers. Andy, please help us. Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Please go ahead and distribute it round. Go ahead and distribute it round. Just speak a piece and hold it. He conquered death. He conquered sickness. If the word of God is true, then your life will step into a new phase today. Communion, come on, union. Come on, union. Come on, union. Come on, union. Shake up, 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 up. come on, pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. The power of the body and the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we are going to take the communion. Hallelujah. Let me read a scripture. You don't need to, you may not be able to hold something, but let me read a scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I feel the strong presence of the Holy Spirit in this place. Listen. First Corinthians chapter 10. Listen to me. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks he broke it. And said take eat. This is my body which is broken for you. He said my body is broken for you. For your healing. For your strength. For your health. He said, do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, 25, he took the cup when he had souped, saying, this cup is the new testament in my blood. This do ye often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Listen. He says this. He says, verse 29, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh judgment to himself not discerning the lord's body verse 30 it says for this cause many are weak many are sick and many do sleep what does that tell you the communion is an antidote against weakness 
listen the bible says if you take it unworthily you will get the opposite of what should happen to you when you take the communion it says it brings strength it brings health it brings longevity it says many are weak many are sick and many do sleep as you take the communion i believe god that there will be change of genotypes miracles hallelujah i know there's a young man you spoke to me on phone you said you've been suffering where is that person you spoke to me as you take that communion are you listening to me the the trace of typhoid will die and go once and for all are you following me now those streaming online as many families that can connect with us just get anything that can be gotten father in the name that is above all names you gave us an ordinance that reminds us of our oneness with you as a church the body of christ and lord on this easter friday prophetically as a church we stand with revelation and understanding and lord we declare that as we take of your bread and as we take of the cup in the realm of the spirit we announce our common union our oneness our victory let it cause healing let it cause deliverance let it cause impartation let the strength of sin be broken let weakness go let curses go let every mental disorder leave let me tell you many of you will experience the power and the fire of the spirit as soon as you take this communion hallelujah worshipers as soon as we take it as soon as you take your, the communion just begin to pray in the spirit hallelujah praise the lord the lord shows me the vision of a cross and every time the lord shows the cross is the place of victory is the place of the exchange hallelujah father bless this cup bless this bread in the name of jesus go ahead and take it take it with faith and begin to the power of god i'm telling you i sense the strong presence of god begin to pray in the spirit common union with christ pray and say every sickness goes command every sickness to go command every weakness to go by the power of the holy ghost command limitations to go in the name of jesus break free from covenant break free from limitation Come on, pray. No accusation. No accusation. No accusation. The power of God is coming upon you. No accusation. The power of the Lord, the power of the Lord speaks better things than the blood of Abel. The power of the Lord speaks better things than the blood of Abel. The power of the Lord speaks better things than the blood of Abel. From sickness go ahead and pray no accusation satan no accusation the accuser that accuses the brethren 
day and night we challenge you in the name of Jesus we overcame them by the blood of the Lamb 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 Hallelujah Please let me have the cup I'm not taking one for myself No Declare Hallelujah Hallelujah Declare and say because I am one with Christ No sickness No death No failure No poverty Come on enforce it by the power of prayer no more sickness no more sickness in the name of Jesus I am one with Christ I suffered with him and today I'm alive with him no more sickness no more death untimely death I come against you Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Hallelujah. The Bible says in John 15 that you are in the vine. That means you should bear fruits. Are you listening to me? Everything that represents delay, stagnation, and unfruitfulness. You're going to pray and say, I am one with Christ. I am one with Christ. Prophesy to yourself. Say, I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. I see no limits. My limits are the limits of Jesus. No limits. No boundaries. No limits. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Everything that is found in Christ is yours by this union. No, no, it's the truth. So, what do you find in Christ? And Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature in favor that means i'm favored that means i'm wise hallelujah the spirit of creativity that came upon bezalel was upon jesus that means i'm creative no limits jesus was never sick no demon Walk Jesus in his sleep. Hallelujah. Listen. Say after me in the name of Jesus. By the power of the communion. I declare. That I am one with Christ. I am one with his spirit. One with him in victory. I enjoy his health. I enjoy his favor. I enjoy his blessings. I enjoy advancement. I enjoy increase. 
I refuse sickness. I refuse death. I refuse weakness. I refuse oppression. I am the head and not the tail. I am above Satan. I'm above demons. I'm above principalities. They cannot do me anything because I am in Christ. No man can accuse me for my past is washed in the blood. Listen, when you have this mindset, you will not walk like a beggar again in life. You will walk with authority. You will walk with audacity. I belong to the family of the king. When your lecturer accuses you, you just feel sorry for him. Hallelujah. As you celebrate Easter, some of you will be traveling. When you know you are in Christ, always picture him walking with you. Don't expect accident. Hallelujah. Many of you have not gone home now because yeah, today is Friday. Let me hold on. Also, no. Satan is supposed to be afraid of you. If with all Jesus has done, Satan is not afraid of you, something is wrong with you. Because Satan was afraid of Jesus Christ. I have no apology for demons and Satan and devils. I can't imagine myself sleeping and a demon comes to wake me. I work so hard. God knows when I sleep, I, I lie down. We all sleep. When it's time to stay awake, we stay awake. When the devil comes to wake me, I'll ask him to go outside and stand there. You are in Christ. The angels of God are protecting you again. Study scriptures. Appropriate it in your life. Don't just be churchy about it. Let it become your present day reality. I've said it. No man can kill me. I'm telling you, I'm not bragging. It's the truth. If you know what I've been through in this life, you will know why I'm saying what I'm saying. Say, I am in Christ. I am one with Him. Hallelujah. This is the revelation I want you to have about Easter. That Jesus died and you died in Him. That the voice of the accuser leaves you forever you can't be praying and God is talking to you and then the accuser comes he says you deserve the sickness remember what you did no many of us have accepted it say it's true what is true Jesus said I am the truth anything that is not in Christ is a lie even if it really happened to you the Bible calls it a lie you better call it a lie Hallelujah. We're out of time. You're worshiping with us for the first time. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bashka na kata branda kete katos, kete branda kata pakotos koto breka teke ne kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.